whether you can hear me or not. So I will know that I'm not wasting energy and time. Um, can you hear me, please? Let me know. Because I've muted everybody, so you have to unmute yourself to talk. Or you can just send a message uh, in the live, in the chat. So that, uh, can you hear you, sir? Okay, thank you. I can hear you clearly. All right, thank you so much. So let's get this. Oh, of we can hear you. All right, thank you. So uh, we're starting, and it'd be nice to start from where we left off uh, yesterday. But I know there were a few questions that um, needed answering. So I guess uh, that would be an ideal place to start from. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Nothing is clear, you know. Uh, you think it takes a while to go around the little bit. Okay. Well, I think the first one and a half hours I'll try and uh, round up uh, all that I have to do in this particular section. And then we can use the second half to do um, technical, technical analysis training. You know, and uh, how long a second? Let me see if I talk about the differences a little bit as good so I can do a bit of an introduction for both uh, methods of analysis and then we'll take the technical one in the second half, probably one and a half, probably three hours. So, as usual, we'll have a break uh, for five, ten minutes at the end of the first one and a half hours, which means that first uh, one and a half hours will be ending by 8.30. So as usual, if you have questions, as I am going along, just drop them in the chat box. We'll come to them at the end of the training. So where we left off yesterday, I was trying to introduce you to uh, Binance and the uh, coin market cap. Uh, those are two very important tools you need in, uh, if you're going to train. Uh, and uh, CoinGecko, the, the two of them are competing uh, uh, websites. Both of them are very useful for research. And uh, <clears throat> I think I will also show you guys how to, sometimes people ask the question, how do they get the smart contract for uh, a coin and we will probably show you how to do that for any coin. Uh, for those who do not know, smart contracts are, what would you call them now? They are self-perpetuating uh, contracts that are created on uh, blockchains. Ethereum was a pioneer of that. And smart contracts are such that you create them on the blockchain and they, they run by themselves and execute the instructions and the agreements entered into by the parties there and there too, sorry. Uh, so, um, when, for instance, for cryptos and tokens, when you talk about smart, smart contracts, it is the <clears throat> code that runs the entire token, that runs, that shares the profit. When you hear people they talk about... Uh, uh, staking, farming, and the rest of them, or even a lending to a pool, it is a smart contract that executes all those ones without any human involvement. If it's supposed to pay uh, <clears throat> a portion of the share, uh, profit generated <clears throat> daily to all parties that are involved, it just automatically does that. It's been programmed to do so. So that's what makes it smart because it's responsive to the structure of the programming that has been created for it, the parameters, protocols upon which it should function. So that's what uh, the smart contract is. So when you get a smart contract, you get the entire, everything that comes with the, with the uh, token of the Now, Bitcoin wasn't built that way. Uh, like I told you yesterday, uh, 
uh, Vitalik wanted something, an improvement of Bitcoin. That's why he created Ethereum. And truly, he has, he has changed the entire crypto space, if we are to be honest. So we wanted to introduce you to Binance and the rest of those yesterday. And we can go there to continue that way. But I'm just thinking that I think it would be more effective if I just run through my entire presentation with you. And then we go, when we go to Binance and the rest of those places, we know we are going into practical sessions, which is what I know uh, most people are very keen on seeing. You know? So let's go. Yeah, I just talked about smart contracts. If you have questions about that, you can drop them later. I'm trying to go into presentation mode. I think the system is a little slow. But if you come on, okay, there you go. Now you can see the screen. And what I have there is mo making money on Binance, you know. So I've told you to create your uh, Binance account. You know, some people contacted me today and I guided them through. So I will be, at that point, when we log into Binance, I will be asking you to, if you have your laptop with you, I'll be asking you to log into your own uh, Binance account as well. If that is, if that is possible. So that you will flow along. So that is Binance. So we'll go on to the next uh, slide. So we can just, I want us to just run through the whole thing. There are ways to make money on the trading platforms and on various exchanges. Now there are so many exchanges that carry very interesting links. There's uh, Uniswap, there's Bakery Swap, there's uh, uh, Pancake Swap. I'm wondering why they don't have Pandelian Swap yet. I hope somebody. <laughs> I hope somebody creates that. That would be a nice one. Or bonus swap, you know. So by the time Nigerians come into that space, you can be sure that will bring a level of innovation the world has never seen. And I'm sure that time is coming. So there are ways to make money. You can lend to a pool. You can stake. You can farm. These are basically the same thing, you know. And then uh, you can uh, the trading is what we are mainly focused on. The rest of the other ones are pretty easy to pick up as you go along. And so, uh, if you are in the group and you are active, you can ask questions. We will we'll, we'll guide you on that. Are you aware also that if you let's say you have a stock of um, cryptocurrencies, maybe like a thousand dollars of Bitcoin, there are platforms you can take that Bitcoin to. And they will give you a loan against that Bitcoin and hold that Bitcoin. Some of the platforms you can hold them forever. As long as Bitcoin doesn't crash too much, they will not sell off. If it crashes too much, they'll notify you that oh, this thing is crashing. You want to pay us to really liquidate your Bitcoin. And uh, the interest is very minimal compared to uh, a bank. But that's in scenarios where you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to spend the Bitcoin that you have, but you have a need for money. Uh -huh. So when you pay, they, they return your... In fact, it's a smart contract that also executes that. When you just pay, automatically the money comes back into your wallet. Then there's P2P trading. You can buy Bitcoin from somebody cheaply and then sell it to another person cheap, uh, at a premium. Let's say you buy... On Binance, you go to their P2P platform, but you have to be very careful. There are a lot of criminals uh, in those places. You know, don't ever release your coin to somebody until you confirm the money in your account. Don't use SMS alerts as your evidence that you have uh, received payments. No. Log into your app and check that the money is there. Uh -huh. And then before you release the coin to the person, but you can buy cheaply from people that way and retail to customers or sell to customers. Or if you have a shop, for instance, these are very simple things to do. If you have a shop uh, in a busy place where you know maybe there are upwardly mobile young people, you can put a banner in front of your shop. 
Bitcoin available or cryptocurrencies available, you'll be surprised that <laughs> people are walking to buy. The reason they're walking to buy is because people have been scammed online. They pay money to somebody they have never, for instance, now, many of you have never met me, maybe one or two. I know Louis, of course, Louis will know me, you know, but many of you have never met me. You don't even know where I live. But you trust me enough to send money across and believe that I will train you as I have promised. Yes, surely I will. I've been in this space for over 10 years, apart from other businesses I do. You know, so if I had a bad reputation, if I was a scammer, you would have seen it online, plus my pictures and everything. People write these things, you know. But people have been scammed, even by people they know and they have done business with for years. So the fact that somebody can see a shop along, not too far from his house, with a banner, he's saying, saying that, oh, buy Bitcoin here. Ah, it'll be very comfortable to walk and sit down with you, use either POS to pay you or transfer money to your account, give you his wallet, and you send his money to him. And once he establishes that, oh, number 15, uh, Airport Road is where that guy is, he, you can be sure he'll keep coming or over time, he now begins to buy online with you because now he knows your office or your shop and he can if anything happens he knows where to come and look for you so that's another way to make money so generally when we talk about trading it's not only when you go online to buy cryptocurrencies and uh, sell if for instance you run a travel agency put a small banner in somewhere in the office and say bitcoin are available cryptocurrencies are available if for nothing even if people don't buy it we provoke discussion uh -uh. <laughs> you two, you are selling this Bitcoin. What is it about? So then you start to talk. And then if the guy ever decides to buy Bitcoin, most likely you will be the first person who will come and look for and say, ah, do you still do that thing? I want to buy. So I'm just showing you a few ways uh, of doing some of these things, which is where some of us started from. So you can trade on Binance. You can do the rest of that. Now, before you, you begin to trade them, if you note, in our group, when somebody sends in a coin, a name that, oh, uh, this coin looks good to buy, sometimes you will see that they will send a, a screenshot of a chart and they've drawn different, different lines on the chart. They are telling you that, oh, once it breaks out of this wedge, it's going to go up or it is ranging right now. The market is unclear, blah, blah, blah. That one that you are seeing is what you call technical analysis. Technical analysis is the analysis of previous price action or previous price movements and the patterns that the charts form out of those price movements, the analysis of those things so that you can try to gauge the next move the market will make. Let me pause there so that you can check that in. And I know a pastor who used to say that um, repetition is the law of deep and lasting impression. He said it's a law, it's a principle for you to, uh, for something to make an, an impression upon you, it has to be repeated because that's the way the human mind functions. So now let me repeat <laughs> so that we'll follow that principle. I said that technical analysis is the analysis of past price movement behavior or action uh, and the patterns those prices form on a chart. You analyze those past occurrences and the pattern they give you indicate to you what the market is likely to do next. The reason why technical analysis works in at least 90% of the time is this. The charts that you see in the market are a mirror of human emotion in the marketplace, human behavior in the marketplace. And human behavior repeats itself all the time. Let me give you an example. If you are in a busy place, and somebody shoots a gun, will you start looking for where they shot the gun or you will take off? 
a thousand times that event of course a thousand times the same action you will take you will run first of all before you start searching unless you are a trained soldier and that is the trained soldier has undergone what the, the what i just told you the law of deep and lasting impression that guy has been trained over and over and over and over and over again to the point where if he hears a gun his reaction is not to run his reaction is to fall flat on the ground and begin to look around for where the fire is coming from and then immediately based on his training he begins to strategize on what to do where can i hide where is the guy can i shoot him from where i am he is too far you know because of training deep and lasting impression that triggers a spontaneous reaction from him uh -huh. so human behavior follows certain patterns under certain circumstances and so it is actually not the chart that you are looking at when you are analyzing charts you are looking beyond the charts at the human behavior behind that, that, that that's why I, I think yes i mentioned market psychology there's a psychology going on in the market all the time all the time if for instance if you see a coin ranging doing what we call ranging that is if it, it, it will fall to somewhere like 52000 maybe like bitcoin has been doing it will rise to 53000 it will come back to 52 or 51 it will go up again that is ranging it's like it's bouncing up and down that the charts that are showing you that behavior are telling you something about the players in the market that the players have not decided what to do they are still worried if i buy now will it fall below 52000 the one who bought at 52 is going to 54 now it might fall let me quickly sell off and hold this small profit that has entered my hand that's what's going on at that point and the charts will show you the charts will show you you know and then there are certain inflection points in the market where uh the price is falling 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 then it stops and then it turns around and begins to move now before that stop there is a certain there are certain charts uh the way the, the candlesticks begin to look that will indicate to you that the market is likely to reverse there is a way the volumes a chart, the histogram of volume that the capital has, the liquidity that flow in the market will begin to taper out. And then it's an indication to you that, oh, the capital flow in this market is dropping. And so the market is likely to keep going down. However, when you see a spike in the volume and you see the, the candlestick begin to become longer and probably greenish, it's an indication that ah, it's like this market is moving though. And then when you see that movement upward continuously, day after day after day after day, and it's rising, what we call higher highs and uh, uh, um, higher highs all the time, that is, it opens high today. Like it closed yesterday at 52, it opens at 52,500, and it, today it closes at 54. Uh, tomorrow it opens at 54,500 and then it rises to 56. You know that that movement upwards has become consistent now. That becomes what you call a trend in technical analysis. There are lines you draw to indicate that yes, the market is trending upwards. You know, and then of course there's the upward trend, there's downward trend. It can go either way. You know. So that it becomes clear that oh price is moving. So we say market is moving up. Or can you remember the word I used yesterday when the market is moving up? We say that the market is bullish. On the as a corollary to that, when the market is coming down, the market is bearish. Now, we when we get there, you see how these candlesticks and chart patterns look. And then bear in mind what I just told you that. Your focus really ought not to be on the charts that you're looking at. Your focus should be, you should be asking the chart questions. What is this chart telling me? See the shape of this chart. It's looking like a, a spinning top. You, I hope you know what a spinning top is. Remember what you call Koso those days? When, when you spin it like this and then uh, if you're able to turn it 
tap side down, your opponent puts his hand down, use it to hit his hand and all. That was a fun game we used to play those days. I don't know if you play. I think this is the Lego generation, so you probably don't know what we're talking about. But when you see a candlestick that, a stick that looks like a, a, a spinning top, that's an indication that the market, hmm, if care is not taken, if it soon change direction, if it's either going up, when you start seeing those sets of candlesticks, an indication that the market may go down, but let's see what happens, you know. So that, they, these are the basics I'm just talking about of fundamental analysis. Later in this uh, presentation, we will begin to talk about the anatomy of the candlestick, how a candlestick looks, you know. But we'll talk about that uh, later. Then for fundamental analysis, fundamental analysis has to deal with things like when you look at a coin, like, um, good, a coin like Cardano, for instance, I keep talking about Cardano, or XRP, or, you know, all the other coins. You look at the information about that coin, you know, and whether it aligns with what should make sense. For instance, uh, every coin project has a purpose. There's a reason why somebody decided to create XRP. There's a reason why somebody decided to create uh, Binance. There's a reason why somebody decided to create Ethereum. You take a look at that reason. If it's a new coin, you take a look at it. If it's an established coin like Ethereum, at that point, it really doesn't matter anymore because Ethereum is, Ethereum is bigger than many, many companies in this world. It's a hundred billion, it, it has hundreds of billions of dollars worth. That's that entity you are looking there. So it, it's become an established entity. So you want to just read about the purpose of the coin just for information sake, not for this uh, by decision sake, you get. So, but when you want to do fundamental analysis, you look at things like, the, the founders, who are they? What is their reputation? Two, what percentage of the coin that they mine that they hold in personally? That's an indication to you that these guys are either greedy or they really have altruistic intents in mind. You know, if uh, some, <laughs> somebody launches a coin that has a trillion, or let's say 10 billion coins, it launches a project that has 10 billion tokens or, to or coins, and he's holding personally seven billion out of the thing. My brother, uh, that guy is not a good guy. He's a greedy human being. And you shouldn't even move near that point. Why? Because he's out to make money. Let that price go up to $1 tomorrow. He will sell off all those coins and walk away from you. <laughs> he walk away. And generally, once the leader of a project goes, the project dies. Because he is the vision carrier. You know, the others who are working with him came to join. So once he takes uh, what he carried with him, the project is dead. You are just holding uh, figures on the computer called tokens or coins. You know, I don't know how many of you saw the chat that TJ dropped in the group. I was it yesterday or today, how some people just sold off. Their, they are the owners of the project. They sold off the entire stock of coins and walked away, probably with hundreds of millions of dollars. So these are realities of the market. Anyway, also for fundamental analysis, you are looking at the soft issues <clears throat> around that project. One would be the roadmap of that project because every project writes what is called a white paper or now they give it different names, light paper, some people call it white paper. That white paper contains all the information you need about that uh, project. As a matter of fact, if you go to the website of that coin, you will still see the white paper of whatever coin it is. You can download it and read it and see whether what they even say it makes sense, what they intend to do, whether it makes sense. So that is part of fundamental analysis. You can tell you somebody wants to create a coin that people will use to fly to the moon. You don't, that is, uh, to me, that's not, we never use Earth finish, one go moon. What are we talking about? I'm not interested in that kind of coin. So uh, it's not a coin I would likely buy. But for some people, uh, the moon experience is something they would like to have in their lifetime. So uh, they might want to buy it, you know. But those are things you look at in the fundamentals. You look at the market capitalization of that coin. Does it have a lot of liquidity? Or the, what is the behavior of the coin? What is the all-time highest the coin has ever gone? What's the lowest? For instance, that can help you take a decision if the highest a coin has ever risen is four dollars, 
and now it's at 50 cents. Well, chances are that if you buy it, it will still rise further up because it has gone to $4 before. So you have a lot of allowance between the current low price and uh, the highest it has ever been. You know, so uh, just a minute, please. So those are some of the things. I think uh, in uh, future slides, we'll talk a little bit more in, in depth about fundamental analysis. Uh, other things you consider in fundamental analysis, which is this particular thing I'm going to talk about is very critical for cryptocurrency trading, news, news. For, for instance, in the Forex market that is like a hundred times bigger than crypto market, even news about the US president can affect the Forex market as big as it is. Uh, when the US president makes certain pronouncements, you see the uh, New York Stock Exchange take a dive, especially under Donald Trump, uh, the stock market was always up and down under his uh, uh, presidency because the man was just a very erratic human being. He could make statements anyhow. He wants to pull out on NATO, which is a gift to Russia. Once investors hear that, they panic. Any business that is related to NATO, Russia, their shares will crash. You know? So news affects markets. And even more so in crypto space because of the small capitalization of cryptocurrency space. We, have just, we are not even up to $3 trillion yet. And uh, 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 any news throws any. For instance, look at the news that uh, Elon Musk just generated two days ago that he will stop accepting uh, <clears throat> Bitcoin as payment for uh, Tesla. It, it threw the, the price of Bitcoin down, it just the uh, market crashed. You know, so you need to be aware because no matter the technical analysis you do, uh, news can just rubbish everything after you analyze it. So, and likewise, news can cause the, the price of a coin to skyrocket. For instance, now, I just found out yesterday that the reason why Ethereum has been on a tier and rising is because uh, I think Vitalik is supposed to make an announcement next week. They are, I think Ethereum is partnering with, uh, I can't remember that point now. They are partnering to create, um, I think, an oracle for uh, the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. An oracle is a, is, a, is a cryptocurrency that provides uh, off-chain uh, data. Uh, to be used on chain. These are technical terms you really don't need to bother so much about. But there are coins that function as uh, oracles. For instance, uh, Chainlink is an oracle coin. It, it supplies data and statistics to other cryptocurrency blockchains. For the uh, it's, so it's like an input into their own process. So that's one of the, the things that uh, Chainlink does. I think Band also Band Protocol. Is an oracle uh, cryptocurrency, but you know, as you go along, you learn all these things. So, uh, what was I saying? So, you look at news also, it's important to always be plugged in. Uh, I have sent several times you see me drop links in, in, in the forum. Uh, two uh, magazines that I follow are uh, 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 Coin Telegraph, which is one of the biggest actually in this space, and then Coin Desk dot com i think uh -huh. uh, of course there are many others you know but those are two that i just generally follow and i have all the news i want to get all the time another thing you want to do is when you go to the website of the cryptocurrency project you want to follow them on twitter and you want to follow them on telegram though twitter is the biggest platform for crypto crazies like us it's the biggest they all the Crypto nuts are on Twitter, <laughs> and the same way they are also on uh, on uh, Telegram. You know, so <clears throat> you want to be plugged in in those uh, places so that you have news. Because if, for instance, uh, you remember when XRP was taken to court by the SEC. If, for instance, now tomorrow the SEC takes Elon Musk to court, you know what will happen to. Uh, uh, Dogecoin. You don't need to be told. 
that the price of Dogecoin will fall. And so if you are holding Dogecoin, the minute you hear that news, you should sell off, or well, if you are in it for the long run, you just bite the bullet and stay with that coin. And so it takes you a ride down to the bottom of the, of the chart, and then uh, hopefully it comes back up if, if Elon is able, able to escape it. You know, but uh, that's just an example. I'm not saying SEC will hold him, but just, I'm just giving an example. Vitalik tomorrow, FBI summons Vitalik and says, oh, they're using your platform to do money laundering. The price of Ethereum will go down. So this is just what happens. So when you're doing fundamental analysis, these are the things you consider. And you say, okay, at this point, the problem they are trying to solve is a, is a big problem. And I think the team of developers, the founder, they, you look at their history, you look at their, uh, what do you say, their pedigree. You know, what have they done before? They, I mean, somebody, there's a coin called One Coin or so. The founder was uh, a software developer with Google at a very high level. That kind of person has integrity. He's unlikely to abandon his project and run away. So that is a good point if I'm considering buying that coin. You know, so it's the same thing. I look at Cardano, I look at Polkadot. These are guys who were with Vitalik when they founded Ethereum. So they have history. I can see things they have done before. So it bolsters my confidence in them that um, uh, their, their word can be trusted and they can be trusted to deliver on a project that they start. You know, I hope this thing is recording because I cannot see it. You know? Everywhere so quiet. I'm feeling all alone here. Can somebody hear me? <laughs> yeah, not a lot, sir. Okay. Yes, we can hear you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, fundamental analysis, a little bit more of it. So, we, we just talked about project use case. Uh, what is the project trying to do? What are they trying to achieve? Are they solving a problem that humanity needs to be solved? And truly, if you look at many of these projects, they are. Bitcoin is solving one of the biggest problems uh, humanity has had. The, if you look at the white paper of Bitcoin, it's so interesting. You need to go and look for it to read. That was written by Satoshi Nakamoto. And in fact, I think if ever they have the first copy of that that was ever done, they'll, they'll probably turn it into an NFT. It's a classic. You know, the style of writing is just, you know that this guy had some uh, um, academic experience. You know? We don't know who, I wish we could just know who that guy is. You know, the first statement he made was that he wants to create uh, a means of an ele uh, electronic cash system. That, that's a very profound statement. He was trying to create a digital currency, which would later therefore be called cryptocurrency, probably technology that was used, that would behave like cash. In other words, um, you know that once you sent out cash, once it leaves you, it leaves you, it's gone, it's gone. The recipient takes it and he goes. That's what he was trying to achieve. In other words, you could send cash to somebody across the world. That's what the guy was trying to achieve. And that would be outside of the banking system. That is a trillion dollar problem he was solving. Let me tell you why. Those days when I was in school, we're talking 19... 87, eight, no, 88, 89, you know, when I was in college, yeah, university, when my parents had to send me money, <laughs> they would go to, if nobody was going home, they would go to First Bank and raise what you used to call a money order. And then I would then go, they would then go, okay, we have a, uh, uh, they, uh, they would then go to uh, uh, um, the landline and uh, probably, I think I had certain days of the, of the month where I used to call, you know, or send message, you know. Then they would leave a message for me that, oh, uh, we have done money order uh, 21 days time. <laughs> you, will, you will get it, which actually is a month, you know. You will get it. So if I, they want me to get money <clears throat> in June, June 17th, they will have to send it to me. That's the way it was until... Diamond Bank came with a uh, Diamond Integrated Banking System. I'll never forget that, uh, that thing, where the, the Ichioku man would go to the bank and, and carry his mat and ask for Tali number. <laughs> you know, those 
funny days. So um, that was how the world used to be until things like uh, bank transfers became faster and global. You had the Western Union and all those things. But all those things, you needed to go to a bank or a shop to go and send the money. There was no internet banking. Later, internet banking came and the rest of that. But even at that, <clears throat> sending money around the world was difficult for a number of reasons. If you needed to... Hold on, please. This, okay. If you needed to uh, send money, for instance, as you know, when SWIFT system came into existence with banks, you would spend something like between 25 to 40 50 dollars to send money because the swift fee i remember the why used to be a transfer office at those days the swift was about 25 dollars then the bank itself would take a charge and many many other things and that money too may not even get there for three days you know and that's I and mean, until today that's the way it is if you want to send money from uh, uh, Europe to Africa, for instance, now, it's the same way if you are using Western Union, the money will be populated to the server, but you must go to the bank to cash it. And that takes the whole day, really. That's the truth. So Satoshi was trying to solve a massive, massive, massive problem, which he actually has solved. Because now, you all know now, you have sent or received Bitcoin. Your sister in America can send Bitcoin to you as she is sending it, you are seeing it in your wallet instantly. There is no delay. The only delay is when do you want to cash it now or you want to wait a bit. That's now your choice. You know, that's now your choice. It's up to you what you want. But that the money will come instantly is not in doubt. So he solved the problem. If I, if I knew then what I know now and I read that white paper, I should have been jumping. I would then go and rush and buy like a million coins of Bitcoin. <laughs> so then now, when if I had a million coins of Bitcoin, you'd be hearing of me on CNN. You know, that's the way these things work now. But so this, that is the use case of Bitcoin. And uh, it's such a powerful use case that you know that this project will do well. So if I had that understanding of Bitcoin, I would buy Bitcoin because I know this thing is solving a massive problem, even though it has become a means of speculative investing right now for the rest of the world. Then you look at what we call the tokenomics. The tokenomics is just the way the founders of the project intend to distribute the tokens or the coins. Like for instance, <clears throat> when Satoshi created Bitcoin, I think that he paid the developers of the software some part of their bill with Bitcoins, you know? And uh, he kept, I think, Satoshi kept a million bitcoins for himself. You know, we don't know whether he's alive. If he's alive today, he's probably the richest man in the world, or one of the richest men in the world. You know, so we don't know, but that is a fact of uh, bitcoin. So he kept a million out of 21 million uh, for himself, and that is that. So when you look at recent projects, now you want to look at. Um, uh, the, the structure of how the coins are distributed, what the founders wrote in their white book that how they want to distribute the coin. They will give 40% to the general public to buy. They will keep 10% uh, in a fund somewhere for charity. They will share 20% among the developers and founders in this proportion, blah, blah, blah. Those tell you a lot about the founders of the project. If they keep too much for themselves, run from that project because they are greedy people. Then, um, like I already said, the project roadmap, uh, what, what are they, what did they write down there? They intend to achieve two years from now. What is their intention uh, in six months with this project that they are doing? Those are the, fun we are looking at fundamentals of that project now. Then, uh, of course, you go to CoinMarketCap, and check a number of things like the capitalization. You look at the all-time high price. You look at uh, we'll get to coin market cap. We look at those things. You look at um, the 24-hour trading volume. You know, you look at the exchanges on which that coin has successfully listed, because the exchange that agrees to list you 
is like a, a rite of passage in the crypto space. When I say it's a rite of passage, let me explain to you what I mean. Uh, <clears throat> it used to be those days that if you were a rich man in a city and you were a member of Lions Club, people respect you. You are a rich man in a city. Even if you are not rich, you become a justice of peace. That is an honor. You become a chief. You know, it means that uh, the elders of the city or the town have accepted you as a man of integrity and respect. You know, so it's a rite of passage that tells them when you say, somebody says he's a chief or he's a doctor, you give, you accord him a certain level of respect. In the same way, if you are a crypto project that is serious with itself, and in two years of existence, an exchange like uh, uh, Hobi or uh, Binance or Bittrex or Bitfinex, they have not listed you, you haven't succeeded in getting on their listing, then we begin to ask ourselves questions. How serious is this project? Because all these platforms are looking for new crypto projects that are serious to list, that have made an impact. They want Because they want to make money. But at the same time, they're also very careful not to list the coins that a charlatan has created. So they pass you through certain examinations. And so if in two or three years you've been in existence, Binance has not listed you, I'm like, ah, guy, those people, are they serious at all? Because it means you haven't been able to meet the standards that that platform has set to list you. And that's a cause for concern. So the exchange on which coins are listed, uh, they matter, it matters, sorry. CoinGecko, of course, is also like CoinMarketCap, like I already told you. We'll visit that site soon. And then there's something called social media listening. There are platforms that will give you that. Uh, for instance, now, if you, go on, if you go on Twitter and you see the things that are trending, and you see a particular coin trending, that's an indication to you that people are tweeting heavily about that coin. <clears throat> And they are not tweeting heavily about it just because they want to tweet. No. <laughs> they are tweeting heavily about it because they are interested in that coin. And if they are interested, chances are that they will buy. And if they are buying, chances are that the price will go up. So that's social listening. It's trending on Twitter. It's massively showing up on TV, in the news. You know, so those are indicators of, on YouTube. A lot of YouTubers are talking about it. But you know, you have to be careful which YouTuber you follow. Some of those YouTubers just want to pump a coin, but they will buy it cheaply and go and talk about it because they have like 700,000 followers and their followers go to buy it because they bought it cheaply. The price goes up, then they sell and make a profit. You know, so you need to be aware that some of these things happen. So social media listening helps you to gauge the mind of people about a coin. And, uh, you know, that's, that's about that. They, there are sites that you can look at uh, for that, but that's that. Then the major influencers, they say the biggest crypto channel on YouTube is, uh, the channel name is Big Boy. Uh, you can look for it on YouTube. He is very accurate in his predictions. And because he has a massive channel, a lot of coin projects give him information. Uh, probably ahead of time. Some of them, when he's talking, will tell you that this is insider information, that he knows what he's talking about, you know. So if you follow such a person, you have information. Uh, Chico Crypto is another guy. Uh, there's another one, Crypto. Crypto, instead of C-R-Y-P-T-O, he's only C-R-Y-P-T-0. You know, but there are plenty online. You are, there's Andres and Tinopoulos. I didn't put Andres here because Andres doesn't really talk about prices of coins. It just focuses on the technology, understanding the uses, the potentials of the technology. He is very good in uh, money economics. If you listen to Andres, you will understand how money functions and why Bitcoin is a better money than fiat currency. Those are things that he's a master at. He has several books he's written. In fact, he's one of the people I personally admire. I must listen to Andres at least once a week if he has a new thing out. 
Then, of course, we already talked about using news to gauge the market. The sources of news, I told you already, Coin Telegraph, Coin Desk, Twitter is another place. You, if you like a coin, it's good to follow them on Twitter so that you get their news. As they tweet out their information, you are updated as you go along. Telegram and YouTube, of course, those are places to go. So, um, this is a wrong slide. This would be under, uh, under fundamental analysis, not technical analysis. So, so market structure. Now, market structure is simply support and resistance on the charts. When you look at charts, the swing highs and the lows, and support and resistance are levels on the chart that generally those are places that attract uh, attention, most attention, because uh, those are points at which the market either goes up or goes down. And you want to be very watchful at those uh, junctures. And they're going to the next page. I don't know why this, okay, good, it's moving now. So uh, they, those are major decision areas, you know, because these are the zones where we decide to either buy or sell or we just wait for uh, the next action of the market, either a breakout or it just continues its uh, behavior in the range. So it's absolutely vital that you know how to locate them on a live chart. Now, this is where I was heading to. I, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> I'm giving, this is uh, a pictorial depiction of what happens in a chart. And you need to just pay attention at this point, please. Well, if you are doing something on this side, it's important. If you don't know this thing, it's important that you pay attention. Now, look at where my cursor is. This is the beginning of the chart. This other side is the ending of this snippet, this picture that we took of a chart. And we have used this line to indicate the movement of price, up, down, up, down. This is exactly how markets behave. There is no straight up movement and there's no straight down movement. Markets go up, slide sideways, go up again, because that's also human behavior. Human behavior cannot be put on a straight line graph. It, it must of necessity be a zigzag <laughs> uh, chart or graph. If you want to draw a line graph of human behavior, it will have some erratic behavior inside it. It will have some uh, smooth behavior. It will have, you know, that's human nature. So this is like a depiction of how human beings behave when they want to buy or sell or invest. So now, this is, if you look at this blue line, we have written support here. You look at this upper line, we have written resistance here. Now let me explain something to you. Let us say the market today is uh, Saturday. This place is Saturday. No, this place is Monday of this week. So the market opened at five naira. Uh oh, let's say a coin that you wanted to buy opened at five naira on Monday. And then it went up to seven naira and fell to four naira or to six naira. And then he moved up again. And then he fell again. He moved up, fell small, moved up again. And then he fell. And then moved down, he fell down again. And then he moved up and continued. Now, the places that this thing is bouncing off of, let's say this is $15 here, this point here. And then this place, it started at five. Let's say this place is $6. Hmm? Look at the behavior of this price. This is price going up and coming down. It went up to maybe $7, let's say, or no, that's too much, let's say $8. And then it came down to $6 again. It went up again, bounced off this ceiling and fell down again. Moved up, nothing bounced it, it just fell. And then moved up again, this guy bounced it back again. Something is happening here. Now let me explain to you what's happening here. The people who are buying, who are the people we say represent demand. You remember what we said yesterday? They are demanding for this coin. They are ready to buy. The market opened up. They were selling at $5 at 8 a.m. Oh, I bring it. I will buy. 
and they start buying. Then after a while, the price, because they are buying, the price begins to go up. The guy bought like an hour ago at $5. He comes back, he wants to add more to the coin because he likes the coin. And you're now telling him $6. Mm, okay, let me buy it. It's not still too high. I can manage. Then he goes to $7. He's like, ah, if they don't, they go up. Am I sure I want to buy? So the buyers begin to reduce. The seven, I won't, let me wait. And all these things, they come down now. Why should I even buy? But there are still some people who still be buying. And the price continues till it gets to $8. And they're like, oh, no, we're not buying anymore. So at that point, the supply in the market becomes more than the demand. And that is what you are seeing at this point right here. Here, the thing was moving up the, because the buyers were more than the, the uh, sellers. The demand was higher than the supply. And so price was going up. It got to this point and the, the, the demand began to falter. Oh boy, $8 is high. We don't know if we can sell it if we buy it. Let's leave it first, Daryl. <clears throat> so as they stopped buying, what happened? Price came down because there was now excess supply in the market that drove down the price. Then it got to, what was this we said, uh, $6. And this guy who bought at 5 the guy who bought at 7 they see that the thing has fallen to 6 They're like, ah, ah, the price is not bad now, $6. Maybe I bought it at 7 the other time. It's below. Let me buy more. The, the price is good. Let me buy. And then buying starts again. <clears throat> and the price now, because it has reached $8 before, they have seen it reach $8 before. They don't mind. Even if it gets to 9 now they're like, well, it came back to 8 and 5 the other time. So we can still buy at 9 at 10 at 12 at 14 Ah, it got to 15. The new buyers in the market, they're like, ah, but the last time this thing fell was $8. So let's wait more. There's no rush, Jerry. Let's wait. If we, if we buy now and it goes to a fall, buy at 17 and it falls, that would be a serious loss. So let's, uh, even the one we have bought before at 14, let's sell off some because there are some we bought at 8. We have made like $6 gain now. Let's sell off some of those ones that are and take our profit and go home. Tomorrow is another day. You see that the price got to $15 now and began to fall because the people are, more people are selling now at, at this point now than people who are willing to buy. And then price falls again to $6. The guy who bought at nine sees that uh, prices are six. The guy who bought at 14 and sold off, He's seeing price at six. He said, six is a good point to buy. And so the buyers rushing again. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster movement. The buyers rushing again. Like, ah, six dollars. Sweet. Oh, yeah, let's buy one. Buy one million coins. Oh, yeah, buy two million. They are rushing the thing. It gets to nine dollars here. Let's say nine dollars here. Yeah, like, hmm. But this one will, will gain three dollars. So let's sell off some more. Uh -huh. Let's take some profit. So millions of them start to sell, and you see a small drop in the price. And then it falls to, let's say, $7. Or, yeah, $7. Some people are saying 7 well, 7 is a good place to buy. Let me buy. Suddenly, more buyers enter the market, and the price starts to go up again. Demand is increasing. Until it gets to the former place where this, we were afraid. You know, I told you yesterday there is fear and greed in the market. At this point, where you are seeing it high up here, fear has overtaken greed. The desire to make profit has given way to fear. Oh boy, 15 was the last place, so this thing can follow. Let's sell off small, take profit. They will sell off, boo, price will come down back to six. Now, look at what is happening. It came down to six dollars how many times? Three times. <clears throat> it went up to 15 dollars how many times? Two times. <clears throat> Excuse me. These two points where the, the market is, the price is bouncing up at the bottom here and at the top, these are their names. This is what you call support. A support is a price or a price zone that the market or the price action of the market is unable to fall below because of demand and supply equilibrium at that time. The law of deep and lasting impression. So let me repeat that. A support zone is a price point or zone 
that the market price action or price is all unable to fall below. In the in, uh, trading terms, they will say it's unable to break that, uh, that zone. And in our own example, the zone is what? $6, you know, look at it here. It got to $6, it couldn't fall below again, no matter how the people wanted to sell, the, the buyers were equal to the supply. They bought up everything that came and they were even asking for more. As we were asking for more, now price began to go up. So this area that you are seeing so is the support zone, like the, the floor of your room. This other place is what we call the resistance zone. The price wants to continue moving, 15, 16, 17, 18, they, ah, no. The people say we can't buy again, no, it's too high. Now, the, this 15 now turns, the $15 zone now turns into a resistance against upward movement of price. So, law of deep and lasting impression, resistance is the zone or price point that the upward movement of price is unable to break through and then it begins to fall as a result of its inability to move upward beyond that point. So for this our example, $15 is our resistance point. So you, this, this thing I'm just giving you so, eh, is what happens in the small markets of the world and the biggest markets in the world. It's the same principle. If you understand this, you can trade on the New York Stock Exchange. There is nothing there. All you need to know is human nature. There is fear, there is greed. When the price is low, greed sets in, they start to buy. When it is high, fear sets in. Oh boy, look, you hold on small low, this thing can follow. That's what happens in all markets. Why? Because it is human beings that function in the market. They are the players in the market. So their behavior is expressed through their pricing of the assets they want to buy. And so the expression of that behavior is what results in the support and resistance points in the market. That's what happens. So in this place, this example you are seeing is what you will see when we trans transfer to live charts on the trading platforms. But we needed to run through this. And then something happened here. This is an inflection point in the market, which you need to be aware of, which is why sometimes when you see maybe as I can talk or uh, uh, TJ talk, they will tell you, well, the market is approaching the most recent uh, resistance. We have to wait a little to see whether it breaks through or it falls back. So at this, these, all these points, and these are wrong points to be buying in the market, to be taking any action. Here you should be selling. If you see, if you want to take profit, this upper point, you should have sold before you got there. Or when you see it falling, be towards the price at which you bought, you can decide to sell. If you are confident, you can hold it. But all the way to the top here, you should have been taking your profit. You bought at $6, market has reached $9. You should sell some of your coins now and go and enjoy some of the profit. Don't wait. The saying that the thing will reach $100. Don't worry. Until it falls to 50 cents. And then you start crying to me that, ah, my mom. <laughs> All my money has disappeared. <laughs> I, I remember a video, they, a recording they sent to me. Some lady went to, I don't know who taught her. She, she went to be trading uh, futures on Binance. And you know, that's leveraged uh, trading. Anything happens, all your money is gone. So <laughs> she said, just see how the money was just melting in my wallet. And all my savings gone. Binance has eaten the money. No. It's not Binance that ate the money. You were trading what you don't understand. And that, that's my definition of stupidity. So here we are right now. Look at this. You notice that this place is different from these other places. Generally, because human nature responds to, uh, if, if a person has been traumatized before, maybe he has had an accident, when a car behaves the way it behaves just because it had an accident. His reaction is always spontaneous without thinking. The way he behaves when he had the last accident will play through his mind and he will either freeze or run. In psychology, they call it freeze or, or flee. He will either freeze or run. That's the same thing with markets. He got to 15 before and he fell. 
a lot of people lost money. And so because they lost money when it began to fall from 15 downwards, by the time it's approaching 15 here, they are like, mm, this is what happened the last time. Oh, let me slow down. I'm not buying again. Let me hold on till the market decides where it's going to. And then the market decides to fall. There. Ah, you see now, it fell. Then it got to $8, $6, where it started from greed, setting again. Uh, but we can buy. Now let's buy, let's buy, let's buy. It goes up again. So it's the same thing. This, this is a point of trauma in the market. Buyers were traumatized here, or sell, sellers were traumatized here. And maybe some people bought at 15. Price now fell to 13. That's trauma. And so the next time price is approaching 15, everybody is afraid. Ah, this thing can follow. Stop buying. No, the last one you bought at fourteen fifty is enough. Oh, don't buy again. Don't buy again. Let's see what will happen. And so, these all these points you are seeing in the market, this resistance support zone and the resistance zones, they are zones at which you wait for the market to decide what it wants to do. You are not the one who should be playing in the market at that point. You you go and park your car somewhere here and be watching. Let's see what will happen. Uh -huh, it has gone up now. It broke through 15 here. Now it's at 16. Let's see what will happen. No. Ah, yeah, I told you now. If you follow and it fell back to 15, the guy is happy. Oh, thank God I didn't enter. And then it didn't fall back to 6 like before. It continued going. It's, it's cost 15, 16, 17. Ah. By the time it gets to 17, everybody is rush, rushing into the market because the market now has a clear upward direction. It has broken the formal resistance. That's the term we use. It broke the resistance zone and continued to move. Generally, <clears throat> markets will either break through or they will retrace backwards. If you look at this point and this point, this is what this is the pattern, chart pattern that is called a double top. If it's a single top, the likelihood of breaking through is higher than if it's a double top. Because the market has visited this point before, came down. It's visited it a second time, it came down. This would have been the third top, but it broke through. So if you have single, double, triple tops, and you have another price action here, you have to be careful when you get to this point. So that's why in the previous slide, we said these are, what do we call it? major decision zones, you see? Because these are the zones where we decide either to buy, to sell, or to wait. Every other thing in between is easy movement. Here, you already know now, this is going to move up. It never, it's not near the previous uh, resistance or support. So you can just do anything you like. But by the time you see the chart, you draw a line from here backwards. You see that the line is touching here, it's touching here. Is very near to the place. Ah, guy, let's look a bit. Now, if it confirms its upper movement that is moving up, then you can feel free to now enter the market until it gets to another zone again and falls. And then it comes to this place. So once a resistance is broken, look at the color of this resistance. Once a resistance is broken, it becomes the same color as this one. It becomes a support immediately. Now, this is the new support. So it keeps coming again. It gets to a new resistance. Maybe this is $24. Falls back to 15, which is the new support. Goes back to its, form, its uh, former resistance of 24. Falls back to in its new support of 15 again. Continues up back to 24 and breaks through. This is how markets behave. It could also have easily broken its most recent support and gone below 15. So these are points in the market that immediately you are looking at a chart, you begin to instantly begin to try to locate its support and resistance points. You try to locate whether there is a clear trend and direction, either upward or downward. If there's a clear downward movement, you want to wait till it gets to its most recent support. That's why the last time we analyzed Bitcoin, I remember very well, we said that either it will break through 60, or it will fall back to the 40s. And that is exactly what happened in the intervening period. Bitcoin was trading at 48 or 47 a few days back. You know, so it has not come back to its uh, former high. 
So I needed to spend this plenty of time on this because this is fundamental to your understanding of chart analysis. You must be able to locate these uh, zones. I think after this class, TJ, maybe we'll just, uh, if Engineer Ken is also there, we'll take screenshots of where some of these things happen and let them have it as homework. Let them just try and identify uh, these points on their own in live chat. So we can show them live charts. Let them go and draw the lines on the live chat and bring back for us to see. <clears throat> so we already talked about this. This is the price level of zone where the rising price stops, changes direction, and begins to fall. It's often viewed as a ceiling, which prevents the prices from rising. You know, so these are this is a live chart. Now you can see how it works. These uh, two arrows are showing you support zone. This is a support zone, this is a resistance zone. Uh, this is another resistance zone. See them here, this is another resistance zone. So another support, you see that it came to this support zone several times and then it bounced up and came here again and bounced down and broke through and formed a new, uh, a new resistance. Now on its downward trajectory, if it had met this line, this, this line is now a support for this price movement until it breaks through. Once it breaks through, it turns into a resistance and comes to locate a new support here. That is how markets behave. Support is a price level or zone where the falling prices stop, change direction and begin to rise. Support is often viewed as the floor level which presents a price from falling further. So look at, uh, this is the same example of what we're talking about. These are support and uh, resistance zones. Then uh, markets can swing high or swing low. You know, swing high is when price makes a high and is followed by two consecu some consecutive lower highs, while swing low is when price makes a low and is followed by two consecutive higher lows. Don't try to memorize it. As you do chart analysis more and more, you will uh, begin to understand. I think I have done very well within the time that I have. So uh, we will use the time that is left to try to tackle questions and then also begin to show you things from uh, um, Binance and CoinMarketCap and the rest of them. But let me just quickly see uh, some of the questions that are there. Okay, a lot of questions here. See, I don't know if you try to answer them. Hello? The volume is low. Oh, okay. Is volume still low now? Please let me know. The very much better coin is a good buy. Well, it's one of the um, indications. It's not necessary. It doesn't stand alone as the reason why you want to buy a coin because it has high market cap. No, it doesn't stand alone. That's just one of the things to look at. If it has a high market cap, it's, it's, it has potential to be, be a good coin, but you look at other things too. Uh, it's one of the things you need. Okay, TJ has answered you. Yeah, but what does low or high market cap say about a coin? In general, the higher the market cap, of a coin, the more dominant it is, yes, so it's considered to be in the market. For this reason, market cap is often regarded as the single most important indicator for ranking cryptocurrencies, which is true. We go and coin, in fact, let me go to coin market cap and so that we just take it from there. Uh, new share, where is the coin and the market and the cap? Here you go. Who are we? Okay. Okay, good. Can you see my screen now? Let me just be sure so I don't leave you like yesterday. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So this is your uh, coin market cap. If you look at the way these coins are ranked, you will immediately notice something. This one that you see here, where is it now? Good. Look at this uh, market capitalization. How much is this? This is 899 billion, Abby. Yeah, 
This is 899 billion. You can immediately see that this figure is higher than this figure. Ethereum has 437 billion uh, dollars in capitalization. And then um, the next one, which is Binance. Wow, I didn't even know Binance had become number three. Binance has 88 billion. It, but you know, there's something that I just find fascinating in this space. Binance is a company that's less than five years old or six years old. I, really, I think they did their ICO in 2017, I remember. So that's about uh, four years. Maybe prior to that time, we had done some registration. So let's give him five years. And in five years, this company is sitting on top of a capitalization of 88 billion. In less than 10, uh, 12 years, Bitcoin has gathered a trillion dollars. It took Apple maybe almost 30 years. Apple was created in the late 70s, early. Yeah, Apple took almost uh, 10, 20, 30, yeah, almost 40 years to become the first trillion dollar company. I don't even know if Microsoft has crossed that, uh, that mark, you know. That is massive. That is massive. So the, when you look at capitalization, it begins to, it just immediately gives you an idea of the size. This is a behemoth. This Ethereum we have seen, 437 billion is a behemoth. You know, this, these are massive organizations. And it's a young guy that's sitting on top of Ethereum. Won't you like to be the Talib right now? <laughs> so, so Binance is 88 billion, Cardano is 72 billion. So they are using capitalization to rank these coins. It's very obvious, you know. One may have a higher price than the other. For instance, uh, uh, let me see now, good. XRP's price is higher than Dogecoin. But Dogecoin has more capitalization. So that's why it's ranking higher than XRP, you see. So I'm just trying to use that to explain what uh, TG was say he, saying here. So all market, all coins with huge capitalization also started from the bottom. So that it has a huge capitalization, if not, um, or if it has a low capitalization, it's not a reason to say I won't buy it because it might have a very solid use case. Let me scroll down and try to find something that's uh, of low cap, for instance. Well, no, Tron. Good, Filecoin. Filecoin uh, has 7 billion. So, will I now say I want to invest in it? No. There are other things to consider. What is Filecoin trying to solve? What is the problem they are trying to solve? They are trying to solve, um, uh, they are trying to move us from decentralized uh, storage of files to decentralized storage of files. You know? So, like now, if I'm willing to lend space on my laptop to them, I can be paid with Filecoin if I lend space on my, on my Filecoin coin, on my laptop to them. And I, all I do is to download their, their system, uh, software and run certain codes and then mark off a part of my storage. And that is that. The, the, that place becomes their property and they pay you rent for using. That's one of the things I remember they set out to do. I think that's a very good thing because there are millions and millions of computers all over the world. So you can actually effectively decentralize your storage and that's safer for you. Because if that thing is in my system, I do not have access to the place. And the day I, I, I say I no longer want to run with them, that file, once I, I sign out of the contract, smart contract, the file leaves my system and I don't have access to it anymore. So that's a laudable project. So for something like Filecoin, I would buy. I remember Filecoin used to be very cheap, but somehow I missed it and I didn't buy it. But look at the price today. Yet the price is higher than Tron, which has a higher capitalization, you see? So these are, so you don't look at only cap, you look at um, the use case, the purpose, the founders, you know, a lot of new things you look at beyond the charts itself. Chart is just pure charts and you look at price, and what the charts are telling you about the buyer and seller's behavior in the background. So, 
where are we? So now we want to, I'm skimming through your questions. We also want to take a look at uh, coin market cap, go to Binance and see what we can do. Okay, now, mm, good. I'm, uh, I'm assuming that most, if not all of you have set up your Binance uh, accounts. So I will just hit the ground running. I'm assuming also that you've already logged in just like I have. So the, like I was saying yesterday, the first thing you want to do is to secure your account. And the place to secure your account is here. You go to security. There's no point funding an account when any old person can just stroll into your account and move out your money. So you need to secure your money before you start trading. So you click on security and it will open up for you like mine is opening now. And then a lot of things show up here. And then you begin to take a look at them. Look at the first one there, security. If I look at the top here, I have enabled what is called 2FA. I have verified my identity with them and my address and all the other things. I have not enabled anti-phishing code for this my account. I have uh, not enabled the withdrawal whitelist. Uh, this withdrawal whitelist is, I will enable a specific laptop's IP address as the only one that can withdraw from this account such that even if any other person logs in with a different laptop, if he wants to withdraw, the system will refuse to allow him withdraw. Now, it is said in um, generally that nothing is secure. If a human being built it, a human being can break into it. And that is true. But if the human being who built it is careful and meticulous, it is very difficult for the other human being who wants to break in to break in. So it's a proverb I'm giving you now. All that fear and, uh, you know, people are just afraid. Anything online, ah, they will steal it, they will hack it. It's not true. Most times when a hack happens, somebody was careless and it happened, or somebody was ignorant and it happened. Let me give you an example. In Nigeria, all the banks keep one, sending messages. Don't give your OTP to anybody. Don't give your token to anybody. It's for a reason. They are trying to sensitize you to the security needs of your account. So the same way they can hack Binance or any other place is the same way they are hacking banks every time. It happens all the time. I'm sure you know people who they went to their bank account, all the money had wiped out. Somebody moved the money. So it's not uh, uniquely uh, different for anything online. So people just have a phobia when it's online. Ah, they will steal the thing. They, but they stole somebody's money from a bank. You, <laughs> you understand? So it's not any different. It's the same reason why some idiot calls you on the phone and he starts to talk to you. We are from XYZ Bank, where you, you forgot to do so and so. So we want to regularize it now. This, uh, we need so and so information from you. Can you press your token? A OTP will come. And the fool actually sends the OTP to, to the idiot that is calling him. And then when they wipe out his money, it's like, ah, this bank, they cannot be trusted. He was the fool at the beginning. You know, so this is the place you go to to avoid the, all those stories that touch. One, you click on... Uh, your two-factor authenticator, you set it up. Either that or you use um, Google Authenticator, which is what I prefer. You will download Google Authenticator on your phone and enable it. Now, when you are setting up, because I've already done this, I can't go through the process anymore. But when you are setting this up, there's what they call the string or the set of letters that comes with this code you save it somewhere, you write it somewhere, because if you ever reinstall your phone or you buy a new phone, that's the string with which you will move the one on the old phone to the new phone. You just type it in and it transfers to the new phone. 
you know, they try to make these things uh, simple for people if they just follow the rules. Then I have SMS authentication here. If you want to, if I want to withdraw now, I must first put this the code from my Google Authenticator. I must put, they will send me an SMS to my phone. And then they will also send an email because I enabled this one. In fact, this is a must. You can't even touch it. You see, now I'm trying to click on it. It won't allow me, you know. Automatically, it's as you sign up, that's what just happens, you know. So, hold on, please. So, uh, these are some of the things you need to set up, you know, when you immediately, of course, you can enable all these other ones. I'm not interested in them, so I didn't bother. So I have passed through, passed you through uh, this. Now, there is something I recommend to people. Uh, if, you are, if you are in this for the long run, uh, as you go further, I always recommend that people should buy a hardware wallet. Because an exchange like Binance is not a wallet service. Let me explain the difference to you so that you know uh, what I mean. Binance has wallets. If you look at this place now, what do they write here? Wallet. If you click on Fiat and Sport or Overview, you will go to your wallets. You know? So the, it, Binance has wallets inside it. But Binance is not a wallet service. Let me explain to you. Binance is not a wallet uh, uh, service. It just has wallets. That is why every time I click, let me show you what I mean. Every time I click to, to send my Bitcoin address to someone's my Bitcoin, if I click on deposit, it will, it will show, me, show me my address for Bitcoin. All these are important, but I cannot dwell on that now. But this is my address. This is the address it has always been since I set up Binance. It never changes because Binance is not a wallet service provider. They just give you a wallet for receiving Bitcoin on their platform. So this is what is called a static Bitcoin address. It's static, it's not dynamic. However, if you go to platforms like blockchain.com, the app or the website, you will see that every time you try to copy your Bitcoin address, it gives you a new address. Those are, it's a dynamic wallet system, address system they have. They have a single wallet with millions and millions of addresses. The reason why this is done is this. If all you had was a single address, somebody can go on what is called the blockchain explorer, the explorer of um, the cryptocurrency, put your address and see your balance. But because it's uh, all cryptocurrency uh, ledgers or blockchains are public documents. So if somebody has your address, he can check your balance. If he knows it is your address, you know, however, that addresses do not carry names. So if the person doesn't know you personally and he checks the balance, he sees $1 million, they're so, so bloody what? He doesn't know who owns it. Makes no difference, really. Yeah, it would matter if he knew you are the owner, but you know, the privacy is still guaranteed because the, this address now, if I put it anywhere on the internet, nobody knows it belongs to me now, unless I tell you that, oh, this address is mine. That's when you know. So anyway, that is that. This thing that you see here pop up here is what you call the QR code. I already told you yesterday. You can use your camera to scan this QR code and if you copy the Bitcoin address, you can try it on your own. For instance, you want to use send money to this address from blockchain. If you click on the, uh, uh, hold on, sorry, hold on, please. Somebody is at the door. Can you guys hear me? I hope you can. So this is blockchain. It's an exchange. It's not a wallet service. Um, a service like um, blockchain.com, Exodus, Electrum. Uh, what's the other one now? There are many, many, many wallets. You know, they all they provide is wallet service. They really do not provide 
exchanging between uh, wallets, although some of them have started veering into those ones. So they provide what you call custodial service. They keep your Bitcoin with them. Those kinds of platforms, when you are setting up a wallet with them, they give you what is either called your private key to your wallet or your seed, you see. And that seed you are supposed to keep very safe. I think this discussion came up in the uh, free WhatsApp group today, and I like the way we dealt with the issue. You know, it, it's it, uh, with that seed then, if I have money on blockchain, my blockchain wallet, I can go download the mycelium wallet and say that I have an existing wallet, put in my seed. It will move the money in my blockchain to mycelium. In fact, no, it won't even move it. It will be able to see that wallet the same way my blockchain wallet is seeing it. Because like I told you the other day, your wallets are like the door to the bank. The bank is the blockchain uh, of, or, the, or, B, or Bitcoin, but your wallet gives you access to the Bitcoin where you can transfer it, you can receive it, you can store it, you can exchange it. That's what the wallet does for you. So anybody who has the seed of your wallet can gain access to the money you have there and move it. So that's why your seed is important. Your seed would be either a 24 let, uh, 24 number set of words or a 12 number set of words. They will give you different random words like come, go, journey, uh, button, food. You know, they'll give you words like that, which if somebody types in the order and sequence in which it is demanded for the wallet to open up for him. So these are very important things if you are going to trade. We always say that you can secure your money in crypto space with knowledge, which is what we are discussing now. So there's really nothing to fear as long as you are informed this way. So having dealt with the security side of things, I want to quickly run through how you can place your first uh, order. You know, if you have to buy uh, a coin. Now, when you want to buy, when you want to trade, usually you would have one coin with which you want to buy another coin. Or as was the case before CBN uh, stopped it, you would have Naira in your GT bank or your first bank, and you transfer it here to buy it directly. You would have done, you, if you notice here, they wrote fiat and spot. You can use uh, Naira to buy before. We just transfer money to Binance account and they'll credit you for the coin that you want to buy. But now that is no longer possible. So you use other coins to buy some of these coins. Like now, if I want to buy Cardano, I will just come here. There are other ways to move around this website, but I'll just really show you. As you log in, you come to Fiat and uh, Fiat and Spot. You click on it, this page will open. Look at here, there's deposit, there's withdraw, there's transfer, you know. Uh -huh. Now, you can, if I want to buy, if I want to transfer Cardano, I will click on withdraw because if I want to send it out of Binance, I'll click on withdraw, put the address of the person that I want to send money to, I'll put it here. See this place I have highlighted. I'll put it there. Then, if the network of that coin, I will select it. That's a, a, a different thing that you will get to understand later. For instance, there's BEP network, there's uh, BEP20, there's BEP2, then there's Cardano network. Because I'm transferring Cardano, I will select Cardano and put it here, which is what is here now, sorry. You can see it, Cardano. Then, uh, what? Well, where is the okay fine okay it didn't open well let me just hold on i need to copy some address so that i can do as if i want to send money you understand okay good let me copy this address now let's assume that i want to send money out i will click here select bitcoin type in this address here you see as I've typed it in now, the rest of the buttons come out. I select uh, BTC because it's BTC I'm sending out. I type in one BTC 
and then you see the withdraw button comes up. I wish I had one BTC here, I'd be a big man. So, so I type in one BTC, and I, this the person to whom I'm sending this money will receive that amount that was written there. Let me just uh, let's see if I can bring up that button again. Probably because I do not have enough money. Yes, yeah, see what it's telling me. My limit, 24 hour limit is 99 uh, BTC, you know, out of 100 because I've done my verification. So this is how I would withdraw money from uh, Binance. If I wanted to deposit, send money to this, uh, my uh, BTC account, this is what I would do. I will look for BTC. You see the way I typed it in here and it brought it up. I look for BTC and click on deposit. And then it will open and show me the, this is my address. I will just click on this place to copy it. Please avoid highlighting to copy because it's easy to make a mistake. Like <laughs> I told the, the I think about two, three weeks ago, I told them something that happened to somebody in a group I'm in. You see, when you try to copy sometimes, eh, you might think you have copied everything, you see. But this one is missing. You didn't copy it. And sometimes if you copy only this portion and put it on the address bar, the transaction will go through because there's an address that looks exactly like this one, like minus the Z. There's another address, a different one. And once you send that money there, it's gone. It will show up in this address that you think you are sending to. So the best thing is to always, if there's a button like this, always click on it. This way you don't make a mistake. Now, let me tell you what happened. Somebody wanted to send USDT to an exchanger friend of mine, $90,000 of USDT. The guy copied it and missed out a few letters. And the transaction went through. My guy didn't receive the money. And uh, later they contacted Binance and found that he made that mistake. And they couldn't recover that money because even Binance doesn't know the owner of that wallet to which that 90,000 was sent. So we then advised him to contact uh, Jason Son on Twitter. Jason Son is the founder of, uh, no, I think he was, uh, yes. He used the Tron network on USDT. So we asked him, well, maybe you can send a message to Jason on Twitter and get other people to bombard Jason. Maybe they can investigate it and see what they can do. But I didn't hear from the guy again, but this is just an example. Imagine somebody sending $90,000 to a wrong address. That guy's village people, they are very strong. Though. So, and that, so that's what I'm trying to get you to avoid in this instance. So back to our wallet section, you, I've shown you how to withdraw or how to deposit. That's the same process you go through when somebody wants to send you Bitcoin. You click on deposit and the address comes, so you copy the address and send to the person. Now, when you want to uh, buy, uh, or trade a coin, this is where you click. Either you click here or you come here. It's the same thing. Uh, you can convert between currencies. You can click on classic. You can click on advanced. Wow, this is 838. Okay, let's just see how far we can go before we go into the next session. So now I can either click here, which will take me to the entire platform. Let me even show you how it will go. Let me click on it. So that you see how the entire platform looks. You see, it brings us to this place where we didn't select a particular coin that we want to trade. So let's say we want to trade, uh, let's say we want to trade Aave or, you know, so we just type it in here. See where we type, you see where I highlighted here? We type it in. Don't let anything here intimidate you. They are just traps and you will master them. So you type in Aave, you see all the currency pairs that tie in with Aave. Aave BTC, Aave USD, USDT. Depending on what I want to trade, I then click on one of them. But another way to also arrive here, but to arrive at the specific coin you want to trade is what I want to show you now. So you don't have to be uh, searching up and down there. Once you are in your wallet here, and let's say you want to trade BNB, which is Binance, you just click here, come here and click on trade. 
and then it drops down uh, in a series of uh, currency pairs for you. So I will therefore look for the one I want to trade. I want to trade Binance versus USDT, or I want to either use USDT to buy Binance or sell off Binance to buy USDT. That's what this slash means. So it will take me straight to that point. You see, how do I know I'm at that point? You look at this place. This is what shows me that, oh, I'm at the right place. And this is important so that you won't go and be selling and buying the wrong coin that you don't intend to buy. You know, so you must always check. I already showed you this yesterday, how the uh, uh, buying and selling is going on. This is the ticker. And then this is the chart itself. These are the listings of the currency pairs. These are market trades. And then my trades, if I'm trading right now, this is where I would locate my own trades. So now, when you want to do um, uh, analysis of markets, let me just show you a few things. We didn't get the chance to do that, but when we get to probably technicals, we can briefly touch on them. If you look at these uh, uh, candlesticks, let me make this bigger so it'll be easy to see. If you look at these candlesticks, a number of things stick out immediately. Some are colored red, some are colored green. And then you have another uh, set of uh, graph, a graph here, sorry, not a set, a graph here. This is a histogram uh, chart, so like a bar chart, and it shows you the volume of uh, currency, of volume of uh, money flowing in each of these coins. You see, it's directly, be I'm sorry, in each of these candlesticks, it's directly behind each candlestick. Are you following this now? So if you notice, just as an example, because we are back, we can say we are, what we are doing right now is like back testing. We are looking at previous price action on the chart. You will see that this candlestick is green, meaning that there were more buyers than sellers. Therefore, price was going up here. And look at this corresponding volume uh, histogram. You see how big it is. It's also green showing that, yes, a lot of money was pumping here into the market. And then suddenly price, this one was reddish. So this is price coming down. This is this is where the, ah, I didn't teach you open, high, low, and close. Maybe, okay, subsequently, maybe tomorrow, I can just touch on that for five minutes before we start. So you notice this is where the, this market closed here. This is uh, good. Another thing you want to look at is this place. This place is where you have the time frame under review. If I click here now, it will show me all the times. This, if I click on this, it will show me this chart as a one minute chart. Look at it, showing one minute here. If I click on uh, this, this is a 15 minute chart that it will now show me. So the time on that time frame that each of these candlesticks represents is 15 minutes. And, but I like to use higher time frames, like the four hour and the one day charts. You see how it's changing. Uh -huh. The one day chart, the four hour chart, allows you to see the behavior of the market more clearly. The one hour chart, a lot of things are going up and down, so you can't plan with that. But if you look at the four hour chart, yeah, you can say, well, in four hours it did like this, this is what's happening, you know. So look at these uh, candlesticks. You will notice that they are not, some look alike, some look, they all look different. They have their own unique shapes. This one, for instance, you see the body is like a malformed uh, thing. It's very small. And then this long wick on top of it. Look at this one. This is robot. This is an orobo, fresh fresh guy, the guy they chop. So see how big he is. Then look at this one, it's small. This is like uh, uh, a shorter guy. Then this one is acting a purple here. You know, <laughs> all these things, they indicate something in the market, you know, and we'll deal with them. If you notice, these small ones generally happen when the price direction changes. Like now you see this small one here, then price began, price was coming down before, when this one, see the first one, see the second one, see the third one, 
market now began to go up. So they indicate something. Look at here now, market was high. Then the red candlestick, a shorter green candlestick. These are that small, small ones from the game. Market went down, came up again. So they, they are indicators of something happening in the market. But what I wanted to show you is how to place your trade. Let's see how we can go back there. I can't see the... Uh, I want to make this smaller. Good. So we are back to where we came from. So I am taking a little water. So look at um, where I want to place a buy a coin now. So I'm going to scroll down here. Look at this. I want to buy uh, either if this left side is green, this right side is red. On this side, you buy. On this side, you sell. You buy or sell what is written on the button. What does it have here? Buy BNB. What does it have here? Sell BNB. So if I have USDT, which is the pair we are trading against or which we want to use to buy or sell, I will then come here. First of all, I told you yesterday there's limit order, there's market order, there's spot limit order. Now, I will explain what each of these things mean to you right now. A market order is you are placing the trade based on current market price. This is the market price that you are seeing here. Once you just click on this, the trade uh, enters the market immediately. Now, this is a limit order. A limit order is I want uh i want to place this order when the market price gets to a certain point so market is currently at 571 or as it is here 567 let's use this as a reference point you know but i want to buy when this price falls below 567 i want to buy at let's say 565 or 560 let's put it like that so I type in the amount I want to buy, the price at which I want to buy, and then I come to uh, the quantity of BNB that I want to buy. Maybe let's say one BNB is what I want to buy, you know. And so look at the price. You see, it has populated the price here. So I just the the um, what it will cost me because I'm buying one uh, coin. I have said I want to buy it at five sixty. So if you show that it's five sixty dollars, and I click buy. Immediately I click by it executes that trans, uh, transaction and you will see it here as an open order or a pending order. When the market falls to 560, the trade will kick off and go live in the market. That's what happens. Now, when I place that order at 560, I can then come here and place another order and say, ah, I don't think I've ever done this before, but that should be the way it should work. I can come here and then place an order and say, oh, I'm buying at 560. When it reaches 567, I want to sell. Then I type it in here and it goes. I hope it does go. That's the way it should work, but I've never tried it. Then there is the, um, where is it now? Stop limit order, yes. The stop limit order, I've never done this OCU, so I, don't, I won't bother to be explaining what I don't know. But the stop limit order, is this you have market at let's say 560 you want to buy at 559 and then you want the market to close at that your trade once you sell uh, you buy at 559 once market gets to let's say 561 it should close and give you your profit back so you set those uh, prices here you want it to stop at this, uh, 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 when it stops at let's say 559, you type 559 here. The limit when it st stops gets to the limit you want it to get to, which is probably 561. You set it there, and then you go ahead and uh, go ahead and place your trade. All these ones are things you will need in future. What is most important to you right now is how to place a trade in the markets. That is where we are, and that's what I want you to pay attention to. 
So you buy here and you sell on this side. So let's say you bought one uh, BNB and it has gone up in price. You want to come back and say, just come back to this page, type in the quantity of BNB you want to sell, click sell. It will sell it and send your money to your USB wallet. So this one, you are buying uh, BNB using USDT. So this one, you buy BNB for you and credit your BNB wallet. This one will sell BNB for you and credit your uh, your USDT wallet. So that is that about that. I know there will probably be questions which I will try to tackle. It's 8.50. We've got one more hour. And uh, when I'm done here, TJ will take um, the next uh, session. And uh, tomorrow I will open the session by just talking about the anatomy of candlesticks, which I didn't get to talk about today. It's important you know how, uh, why candlesticks look the way they look, you know. So where are we? We're in Coin Market Cap and Dr. Gecko, otherwise known as Coin Gecko. These two websites basically do the same thing, although they have differing information. One, there are some coins that CoinGecko will have that Coin Market may not have, and the same is vice versa also. But basically, it's the same information they have. If you know how to use one, you know how to use the other one. So the first thing is just a tour of the website I'm going to give you. The rest, as you use the website, uh, you become familiar with them. This, this is the menu. First of all, when you come to CoinMarketCap, you will see uh, some statistics at the very top here. There are 9,000, I didn't even know there are this many. There are now 9,835 cryptocurrencies on CoinMarketCap. 9,000, that's massive. Then exchanges, there are 377 exchanges. Then the total market capitalization of cryptocurrencies is 2.235. Trillion dollars. Some few days ago, it was 2.5 trillion. So it means that since Elon Musk went mad, the uh, market has lost some value. About 300 billion, I think that would be no uh, 200 billion plus. You know, so 24 hour volume of the entire crypto space is 210 billion dollars. That's all the currencies that are traded in the last 24 hours. Then uh, Bitcoin dominance, this is a very important statistic. It shows you what percentage of this total market capitalization that Bitcoin, that runs in Bitcoin, that is purchasing or buying Bitcoin. It's 40% of this. But a month ago, it stood at 60%. It has dropped. And that's why people believe that um, a lot of the money is moving into alternative uh, 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 cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and the rest of them. And then Ethereum has 19.5% dominance of the market. Then the uh, standard, well, this is something if you were to do Ethereum transactions, this is the cost, the, the, it will cost, what it will cost you. It's called the GUI, the unit with which they measure the Ethereum fees. So this is kind of like a gas station, Ethereum gas station. You can see the sign here, it shows like a gas pump. Then here you have your listing of cryptocurrencies. There are charts, the fiat rankings, company rankings, and the rest of them. Then exchanges. Uh, these are NFTs, non-fungible tokens that I talked about yesterday. If you had your portfolio of coins, you can list them here. So immediately you just click on this, you show where you see where all your coins that you have are. No, it's like a listing of the coins you have bought. You can save them here. What these guys are trying to do is to ensure that from this platform alone, you can actually do almost all the things you want to do. You can put coins on the watch list. Yes, this is a calendar for ICOs, airdrops, and then events in cryptocurrency space. Well, products, I don't know what this, okay, converter, you can convert, you can calculate how many of one currency you use to buy another currency or what it's equivalent to, you know, so 
this is the listing of coins. I'm going to just quickly drop into one of these coins. We can, you want to open the coin up and see more, you click on the coin directly and then it opens up. By the way, whatever I'm doing here is the same thing that applies to uh, to um, uh, on CoinGecko. Yeah, Uniswap is ranked number 11 on CoinGecko. What is it ranked as in uh, Coin Market Cap? Well, I already opened it. Where is the ranking? Okay, let me go back. Just um, a second. Okay, it's, it's number 11 here also. So that means it's the same thing. I just wanted to have that information. So let's go back there. <clears throat> Some people say that uh, coin market cap has more information. I don't know. I have never tried to assess that, but I know that whichever one you use, you get what it is you are looking for. So while we are waiting for it to open up, looks like the system is a little bit slow. Okay, I think it's, uh -oh. we haven't gone back to prime market cap. Hmm, okay, voila, here we go, okay. So now, a lot of things here, a lot of things, you know. For instance, here immediately, you can see the smart contract of this coin. And uh, when it finishes opening now, you good. You can see, you can copy the smart contract of Uniswap here. You can also, uh, it has, that means Uniswap is now on Polygon. This is massive. So Uniswap, if, uh, okay. So it has smart contracts on all these uh, platforms. Where to? There's a smart contract for Uniswap on Binance Smart Chain. I need to go and check this. This is interesting. So anyway, there's a lot of information here. You look at the ranking, number 11. Look at the price right now. This is the percentage by which it has either gone up or fallen in the last 24 hours. You know, then you can click on this to buy or exchange, you know, game for, for gaming or you want to earn some of these cryptocurrency, you click there, but that's not what we are interested in. Every cryptocurrency has an explorer where you can see your transaction. If somebody gives you what is called your hash ID for a transaction, you can come to any of these platforms and you will see that transaction. You see the time it was done, the value when it was done, and a host of other information about that uh, transaction. So, these are just tags, they are not important. So the, where you need to immediately pay attention is this area now. Look at the market capitalization of this coin. It's uh, $20 billion. This coin, well, I think it was created about a year ago. Yeah, so the speed of growth is amazing. Then the uh, fully diluted capital is uh, $37 billion. This is the 24 hour volume of money in this platform. This is a bi uh, yeah, that's a billion. Then the circulating supply is about half of that, 56%. These are statistics that really have nothing to do with uh, when you want to take a decision to trade, except for the capitalization for me, really. So, but this is where I was heading to. These are uni, the name of this coin is uni. These are the statistics I am looking for. This is the price. This is 24 hour change. That means this coin lost value by $2.17 in 24 hours. Then um, 24 hour low, 24 hour high. This is 36.92. This is the highest, this is the highest it got to in 24 hours. Then this is the lowest it got to. So if I were to buy this coin now, I want to buy it as close to 36 as possible. So right now it's 37. That is a, a sign that, okay, the market is going up and down. Maybe I can buy it and watch for it to go up to 40, maybe 40 and then sell off. If, if I'm doing what they call scalping. I personally do not do scalping because you can get caught in the market. Instead of rising to 42, you can fall to, to 30 or 25. 
and then you are stuck. You can't sell till it rises again. Now, and, and that's another thing. When you trade cryptocurrencies, you really do not lose money until you sell at a price where it fell because you are under pressure to use that money. That's why we say trade with money you can afford to live in the market for a long time so that you will not be under. It's not money you used to pay your son's school fees in two months' time that you should be putting in crypto. You will be under pressure and it's not a good way to trade. So uh, market dominance, that's not important. The ranking is not important for me. The next thing I want to immediately look at is the all-time high. You know, the all-time high price will be 52-week high. You know, it, this is the highest it ever got to. So meaning that if this coin starts to go to 45, 46, 50, 51, it's getting to new records. And so at that point, I want to be careful. That's not the point I should be buying because this coin started moving from, and this is even less than $1. This way started moving from about a year ago, and now it's at 44. That's some serious movement. So these are the ways you gauge whether it's a good place to buy or not. This is the all-time lowest it has ever been. See the percentage by which it has moved since 8,000%. This is, that's a very huge one. Then you can see other statistics about the coin here. Uh, now these are coins that people also watch. I was trying to look, okay, like they've changed. Uh, okay, show more, that's good. Okay, yeah, we passed through all this. Fine, it's showing less now. So this is, this gives you information, like I just said. This is a write-up about the coin. We don't really need it that much. Now, if I want to locate where I can buy this coin, I will come to spot. And if you show me all the exchanges where this coin can be bought, I can buy it on gate.io, Binance, Hobi. Uh, I can buy it on Uniswap itself. And then you can click on this to see all markets. And then uh, you see all the plenty exchanges where you can buy this coin. Bitstamp, FTS, Bitrex. There are many, you know. So this is the immediate information you get from uh, uh, coin market cap. So I think uh, this would be a good place to take a break so that uh, we give ourselves five minutes break. When we come back, we decide what to do. Do we go ahead with the class or we tackle the questions? I would have said, let's go ahead with the next uh, session with TJ. Maybe TJ, you can do an introductory uh, 15 minutes and then the rest of the 10 minutes on top of it, we'll try to answer these questions. Or while you are teaching, I can be typing responses to people. So that saves us time. So we have a lot to cover. You understand? So uh, let's take a break. This is 9.03. We should, let's be back here at 9.10. If that's okay by you guys. So thank you.
Okay, guys, I'm back. I know you are still here. Uh, TJ, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay, so I think I'll just hand over to you for maybe you can do a uh, 40 minutes, I guess. So that in case there are questions on people's minds, we can deal with them. And then we'll continue with your own session tomorrow. So I'm going to hand over the um, session to you. Um, you could just introduce yourself and then take it from there. So I'm making you host. So check, you take over the screen for me. Is it with you now? Okay, good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah. Are you uh, are you hearing me, please? Yes, I can hear you. So let us briefly move to the important aspect of this technical learning. So let's start with the first Mr. Gerald has said a about it already, and I will just point out some things that we need to do to into consideration. Your voice is I don't know whose microphone is open, but maybe you can mute everybody. Okay, Luis has his hand up. Luis will get to you. Uh, at the end of this, right. yeah. So, market structure. Let's start with market structure. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. Market structure uh, simply means the support and resistance on the cat, the swing eyes and lows. The support and resistance level uh, that are on the chart. And those are those levels that attract, uh, attract most uh, attention. Yeah. The point where the price turns are reverse or those points where the price breaks, breaks out a level to, to start pushing up or down to another level. Yeah, let's, let's move on. I also call them the major decision zones, like we said earlier, because these are the zones where we decide either to buy, to sell, or wait for the breakouts. So it's, it's, it's vital, it's absolutely vital to know how we locate these uh, levels on the, on the live charts. Yeah, we have seen this before. There's, Let's, let's move forward. Okay, so resistance. Resistance is a price level or zone where the rising price stops, changes direction, and begins to fall. Like uh, Mr. Gera said earlier, the resistance levels are, 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 are those levels that, that prevents the, the price from moving higher. They act as, as, as ceilings in, in your room. In your house, you understand. So, resistances are, are often viewed as a ceiling, which prevents the prices from rising further. When the price gets there, it falls back to, to, to the support. So, if we look at this uh, this this uh, uh, chart I have with me, you can see the red zones. These red zones are the resistance zones. These mark red zones. You can see that when the price left this area, this was the support zone. When it left this area, it pushed up to this level. It touched it the first time, pulled pull back. Then the price pushed up again into that level again. But what do we find? See there, the price plummeted. 
it, it fell down again back to the support level. And as you can see here, this support held the price. So the price pushed up again from the support. So these zones are very important when we are looking at, at, at those charts. The support zones and the resistance zones, they are very, very important. So let's move to support. Okay. Support uh, price levels and zones where the falling prices come, changes direction, and begin to rise, just like I just I, I, I told you now. Support is often feel as the floor level, which prevents the price from falling further. It's like the floor in your room, the ceiling and the floor. You know, when you jump up, you definitely come back to the floor level. Or if you're holding a ball in your room now, and you're and you you playing with the ball, you're passing in your room, if you throw the ball up, the ceiling will prevent the ball from pushing higher. And when the ball falls back to the floor, Ground level, it, it can't go beyond that level below the floor level. So that's the same, it's a simple analysis of support and resistance. So then I think we should move to the to, to the to live chart to see how how we can locate these levels on the on the live charts here. Yeah. Exactly. If yeah. we can just deal with that today, support and resistance yeah. would be a good place to end. So if we look at this chart, let me remove drawings. This is a live chart of 40 USDT. 40 USDT. If we pay, please let's pay attention here, please. If we look at this chart very well, we will see that here we have equal eyes here. The resistances and support and support levels are drawn with are drawn with equal eyes. Equal eyes. If we look at this chart very well, please pay attention here. The price pushed here for the first pushed it into this level for the first time here. Then for the, sec for the second time, the price came into this area again. And for the third time, before the price fell, it came into this area again. So this, this, uh, this level where we have this equal eyes, H-I-G-H-I, this equal eyes is where we have our resistance level resistance zone, the first, the first touch, second touch, and the third touch. And what do we find to see here? The price went down. So if we look below here as well, we have another level here. So we draw support zones or, or areas with equal lows. You take your drawing tool and draw with equal lows. So this drawing tool can be found right, uh, right here on the left hand side of your screen. Even if you are using Binance app or Trading View, you have the uh, the lines here, the trend line, the trend angle, the horizontal ray, vertical line, all anything lines. So all the lines are here. The parallel channels are both. So all the drawing tools, the, uh, the shapes. Are here you have the brush, you have the rectangle, the eclipse, triangle, curve, double curve, and, and so on. Here, so all your drawing tools are here. Everything you need, everything you need to analyze your charts are right here. All the drawing tools. So back to the support and resistance level. So here you can see that the price moved from here. It 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 went up, came back down, then pushed up again. Pushed up again into that level. Pushed up again, then came back to the support zone. Now the price is pushing up again. So that's how we look at uh, the resistance 
and support levels of our staff. Like that. So let's look at another chart. Let's, let's take a look at uh, other USDT, other non USDT. So to point at our resistance and support levels. Okay, on Cardano USDT, I'm picking my drawing tool again. Right here, we have the zone here. So let me draw from here. Before the price broke this level, this, this zone was acting as a resistance. We have people levels here. As you can see, that the price the candles did not close outside this area prior, prior to this break. So on this chart as well, here we have we have equal loads. We have equal loads here. So we have we draw our support zone with those equal loads. There we go. So we have the resistance and we have the support. So this is an example of a ranging market where the price keep push or a channel. You understand? So this, this is an example, a perfect example of a ranging market. So before, uh, for example, if, if, if you want to change this, uh, I don't know, for example, you have to wait for a breakout of this channel, of, of this uh, resistance. A breakout, then you are sure that the price is ready to move. And see, since, since the price broke out of, of this uh, of this uh, zone of this area, the price has, has been pushing has been pushing upward. So that's how you draw your um, resistance and support levels. You look for 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 those areas with equal highs and equal lows. Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. I, I can, I can okay. hear you. Mm. Yeah. So you look for you look for those areas with uh, the equal eyes and equal lows to draw your support and resistance uh, zones. So there's another. So um, we have two types of support and resistance. We have the horizontal resistance and support, and we have the trend line resistance. And, and support. So here we are still talking about horizontal lines, horizontal resistances, horizontal support. So let's take, let's go further and take a look at uh, where we have the trend lines and how uh, and how you draw them. Okay, this is another chart. This is Avax USDT. You can see that here we have. We have the poor eyes here. This is a resistant level. Yeah. So we are waiting for the price to break out of this place before we go in. To be sure that the price is ready to move. So let me, let me see. Let me check. Um, okay. Now let's 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 take a look at the trend line trend line uh, support and resistance. Trend line support and resistance are, are drawn with uh, higher highs and higher lows, something like this. This is another form of, of, of support. You can see that the first one we drew was horizontal, something like this. So this is, a, this is a horizontal resistance. And here we have a trend line support. That's that the price keeps pushing higher. So 
there, there is this concept of uh, called higher highs and higher, higher lows. This is a low. Higher high. Because this low is higher than the previous low, we call it the higher low. Consider that this low is higher again than the previous low. So it's under higher low. So that's, I think that's how the price will keep pushing up. It breaks out of this uh, resistance. So that's how you draw your uh, trend line support and, and uh, trend line resistance. So this is a trend line support uh, here. Let, let's, let's see if we can have a trend line resistance as well here. So you pick your drawing tool from a higher high, okay. So there's one important thing we have to take note here. You draw these things with the weak, with the, with the tails of these candlesticks with details, you don't draw them through the body. For example, now, let's pay attention here. On this chart, we started drawing from here. This first touch here, we have second touch here. So once you have at least two or three touches, then your support or all your resistance is established. This is the top touch on this same line. So our trend line has already been established. Our trend line resistance. You can see that this line has been preventing the price from pushing further. And here, the price is finally breaking out. This is what we are waiting, we have been waiting for. The price is finally breaking out. So at the close of this candle, outside this line, you can see that previously the price has never has never closed outside this line. But this one is closing outside this line, probably. So you have three hours more to go. So as the close of this candle still outside this line, after outside this resistance zone, it means the price is ready to move. They will come by. So, do you understand me, please? Hello? I, I understand you, but I think they should talk because. Yeah. Okay. Can you take it again? Uh -huh. Okay. We have two types of um, support and resistance. You understand? So, the first one are these horizontal lines, the horizontal resistance and horizontal supports. You understand? So the second type we have is the trend line, the trend line, which are not all horizontal like this. This is a rising line. You can see that the price is rising here. So this is a support trend line, a trend line support. I mean, yeah, a trend line support. You can see that the, we, we drew this with, with the tails of these candlesticks as the, price, uh, as the price keeps pushing higher. So the same thing is happening here. The price is moving in this range, in this triangular uh, form of range. You can see the price came here, pushed down, came back to that line again here. It's pushed down. For the third time, it, it came back here, then, then came down, touched this line, went back up, came back to this resistance again. This is another form of resistance. It's, it's not horizontal, it's called trend line resistance. So the price came back here again, pushed down. Back to this support, and what do we see? You can see that the price is, is respecting, is respecting the support here. So from here, the price starts pushing up again, and right here, right here, you can see that the, the, the price is, is breaking out of this structure. It's breaking out of this this pattern, this shape, the trend line resistance and the trend line support. So the price is breaking up of it right now at the moment. So a close outside this, this shape, if, the, if this kind of, kind of thing closes outside this line today, then we are good to buy. Do you understand, sir? 
Hello? Uh, yes, I do. So that's, that's how we draw the trend line support and resistance. We draw with the details of the candle. You cannot pick your tool and draw like this. No, it is not, a, it's not possible. You understand? So we have to draw with the width where the where the, uh, uh, the price keeps bouncing back and forth. So let's 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 take a look at another year for you to yeah, for you to understand. Yes, this is another year. This is a BNB USDT. This is BNB USDT. You can see that the price. Is pushing, is pushing, up, pushing higher. So let's start from here, from the low to the higher high, from this low to this higher high again, higher low, lower high, higher low, then higher high again. So the price is here at the moment. So let's let's look at this thing very well. Okay, since we have, since we, uh, the price is not it's not moving in a range right now, so we have to draw with the trend lines because the price is trending higher. It's trending higher. So if you pick a drawing tool, place it here. Okay, we have to. Lines connected. Let's see if we can have something similar here. So we have to load here. Let's see. Okay. This is not giving us a perfect shape. The shape is not perfect. Okay. Let's 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 take a channel to see if we can get something good out of it. The parallel channels. Two lines moving in the same shape, same. Uh, yes, I think this is this is good. So the price is moving in, in this channel. We can call it a range as well, but it is it's a trending phase. It's a trending phase. So here, here now, we, we expect the price to move from here to come here, give us a higher low, then bounce back to give us a higher high. So this line here is the resistance. This line here is the support. Trend line resistance, trend line support. Do you understand, please? Yes, okay. I, I understand. Let's, let's, let's move ahead to BTC. See if, if we can have, okay, we have something. Okay. If we look at this chart very well, this area, we have multiple touches here, multiple lows. So, and they are on the same level. So you, you, you can take a drawing tool and draw something like this here. This is BTC USDT. That is our support level now because the price is trading above this level. So this level is having a support. So if we look at here as well, you can see that the market is not getting exa exhausted. The price is not, is not pushing higher anymore. Here we have higher high, low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now we have in a, a, a uh, because we have a lower low here. Now it has changed the lower high, and I'm expecting okay, this is another lower low. 
if you look at this very well, you can see that the price is not is not pushing, it's, it's not giving us a higher high again. The, the first touch here was a higher high. Because this was the last high before this. This was the last high here before this one. So this is a higher high. This higher higher than this, so it's another, it's another higher high. Then the first I here. We have another we have another higher high here. We have another higher high here. We have another one here. But now, the price is, 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 is not pushing out any further. It is not giving us, low, giving us lower high. So, so uh, let's take our drawing to draw the small channel here. The price is moving down now. Okay. If you look at this very well, I see that we have a trend, a trend line, a trend line support, and a trend line extension. This is the resistance, the trend line resistance. This is the support, the trend line support. And here we have the horizontal resistance. Sorry, the horizontal support here. Looking closely to the, uh, uh, this chart, you can see that the price has broken out of this level, has broken this support, and has invested it twice. So we are expecting a fall in, in price. And the next support is at 30,000, 32,000. Before the bounce again. So if I take away this, this channel, right here, we have, we have the support trend line. And right here again, we have, we are starting to see a resistance, a, a, a trend line resistance. This is a trend line support, this is a trend line resistance. So the price is trading under, the, under this, and now it has broken the support. So we expect the price to somehow push down the resistance in the coming weeks. Let's look at another another just to see if we have if we can also okay. This is another one here. If you take your drawing tool, this is right here. Draw with the wicks with the tail of the candlesticks. This is a uh, trend line resistance. As you can see, the, the price is in the downtrend right now. It's giving us lower highs and lower lows. So we don't know yet what's going to happen here. So here we have a high, a lower low, lower high, Lower low, this low is lower than this, so it's a lower low. This high is lower than this, it's a lower high. So, like that. So, so we have a trend line resistance on this. And here you can say, okay, we have we have equal lows here. We have a level there, you can take a drawing tool and draw something like this here. 
as our horizontal support and so that the price reached here and, and got rejected, pushed back, then the price is here, it got rejected, pushed back again. So this is the horizontal support and this is a trend line resistance. When we get to uh, shapes and pattern, I will, I will, I will, tell, I will tell us uh, what, what this actually means. This is a pattern trading, so it's called a uh, descending triangle pattern. But we are not there yet. Let's just focus on the trend line support and resistance. The horizontal support and trend line support and resistance. Okay. This is cake USDT. Right now, the price is trending downwards. So this is a trend resistance. The price is trading below it right now. So it's a resistance. Before that. There's, there's, there's something here. Yeah, yeah. See, yes, this is a support. This is support here. Yeah, yeah. consider the first touch, second touch, third touch, then the price keeps, keeps bouncing up the line. So this is a trend line support here. Yeah. Here is a general resistance. Let's move, let's move down to check more. Okay. Let's use this. Okay. This is a lunar USDT. You can see that right here, if you look at the price history, right here. There was a resistance level, resistance zone. We have, we have this equal I and equal lows. This is a type of ranging market, we call it the ranging market. This is the support, this is the resistance. So the price was trading here inside this, inside this channel before it finally broke out of, this, of the channel. Because so that prior to this break, to this breakout, the price has never closed above this resistance level. Are you with me, please? <coughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are here. Mm. Okay. So we, we can see clearly that immediately the price broke out of this of this ranging phase. The price pushed up, it pushed up seriously from, from this winning phase. So when you see something like this and you put your lines, if you are not if you are not willing to trade the range, the best thing for you is to wait for it close above these equal eyes before you get into the market. So right here we have another thing. We have equal eyes as well here. Yeah. yeah. We have a resistance level here, as you can see. We have a resistance level here. And here as well, we have a support zone, support level. Let's use, let me use the shape. Okay, let's use this one. This is an under ranging phase for Luna USDT. So the, the price will keep pushing up and down in this range until the buyers are ready to say, okay, let, let's push it up. So if you continue with a movement like this,
So before we get into this market, we have to wait until the price closes above this range, something like this. Then you can say, okay, we are good to go, let's buy. So here we have the resistance. Here we have the support. Okay. Okay. Let's see, let's look at the chart. This is OG. Good. Let's look at this chart carefully. Please pay attention. This is one ammonia USDT. So here we have equal highs here. Fine. A well defined resistance level. Please take note, we are, we are using a daily chart. So each candle here, each candlestick here represents a, a, one day activity in the market. This green candle represents all the activity that has gone in, in, into this coin today, into this pair. One USDT, this is one candle. So this is, this is yesterday's candle, then the day before, and like that. So we, are, we have a very well-defined resistance level here. And here as well, if we look at it, uh, we have Yeah, let's pay attention, please. This is a resistance level. We have the horizontal support level here with equal lows. So look at this very well. The price is pushing up and is trying to close, it's trying to force a close above this line. Once the price closes above this line tonight, then we are good to say, okay, let's buy. If it closes above tonight, then you can buy and target this this level, because we are not sure if the price will break this level now or, or later. So when it gets here, it is, uh, uh, we are, uh, well, what you do is to take profit. Take your profit when the price gets here, gets to uh, levels like this. Like the pictures we have seen earlier, when it gets to the resistance level, to take profit. So major decision zones right here. So this is the resistance level here. This is the support level. And here we have a trainer resistance, which the price is, 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 is trying to break right now. So that, that's for one USDT. Let's check on. Um, okay. This is TRX. TRX USDT. Right here, we have a well defined resistance level. As you can see, these levels are in four. That's how you draw your resistance and support. You look for equal levels on your chart to draw your horizontal support and resistance. And for your trend line support and resistance, you look for the higher eyes and the higher lows, or the lower highs and the lower lows on your chart. So right here, don't have, uh, don't have equal lows here, but we have something like higher, higher lows. Okay, this low is higher than another one here. And we can see clearly that the price is respecting this line. The price is respecting this, this trend line, this support area. So this is your trend line support. And here we have the horizontal resistance. So 
So it does its first round, you will see. Let's, let's check out more. Uh, yes, if we can have some. Okay. This is a uh, big chain, big chain USDT. Here, do we have the four eyes? No, we have I and we have a little high here. So you pick your drawing tool, place it here. That is the resistance, the, the trend line resistance. And here, do we have the four lows or higher lows? We have the four lows here. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six here. So we are good. Please uh, support right uh, here. So here we have our support. Here we have our resistance. This resistance is not horizontal, it is trend line resistance. And here we have horizontal support. Because the lows here are equal. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is for V chain USDT. Okay, this is another one. Okay. Right here we have our support level here. We have to touch it, but prior to this, uh, before this point, this, uh, this don't turn to support here. It was acting as a resistance. You can see that the price got here, pushed into that level here and got rejected. Then broke out with this big, with this big candlestick. That, that was a lot of momentum. Then the price came back here. You can see that the price support zone is at its holding. Is supporting the price, so the price is not going to do it right now. So, right here we have we have our resistance level, the trend line resistance. That's how you do it. Consider the price has not closed outside this area, outside this line. So we have multiple points. We have one, two, three, three, as in multiple purchases, a lot of purchases are here. But the price is still trading inside this pattern, within this pattern. So let's check, let's check another one. This is, this is XRP USDT. Our next RP USDT, we have uh, trend line support and the trend line resistance as well. Here yeah, we are drawing support with. Uh, Higher lows, as you can see, one, two. This uh, this level is low. Then we have another that is higher than this level. So that's higher low, and we have another low here that is higher than the previous low. That's another higher low. So we drew this we drew this, low. We drew this line with um, the higher lows. And here for the resistance here, you can see that we don't have we don't have equal eyes here. You understand, but we have we have lower eyes. So this is a high. That's the first eye here in this range. Here we have another high. And right here again, we have another high. So connecting these highs, this I with the lower eyes, we have this trend line. So as long as the price is still trading is inside this room, put the answer and the, and the, and the watch Until the price breaks out of this range, then we can say, okay, yes, we are good to go. Let's go. So that's how to draw your supports and resistance, both horizontal and trend line. Here, if you look at this place very well, there's a well-defined, well defined level here. The resistance level here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
we have a resistance barrier. I see that here we have multiple touches into this area. The first one, second one, then the price pushed in here. But here we have the confluence here, confluence of the trend line and the horizontal uh, resistance. So that's how we draw this line. Support and resistance, they are very, they are very, very important in doing, in doing in analyzing the market, in analyzing these peers. They are very, very important. They are, they are the zones that people, everybody, watch out for either in forex markets, either in stocks markets, either in cryptocurrency markets, in every market, support and resistance levels are very, very key. So that's how we do it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, TJ. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, it's, it's perfectly done. My, I have a few, I'll take the questions that I see here. I think, um, Somebody's hand was up. Uh, Louis, if you are still here, you can unmute yourself and just go right ahead and ask your question while I'm talking. You can stop me because it's your turn to ask now. But um, while we're waiting for Louis to come on, uh, or would you rather t uh, write it? You can write it in the chat or you can un unmute your microphone and just... Uh, uh, let me reclaim my host. Okay, sir. Yeah, I've done it. So, um, okay. uh, a few things I want to just bring to you uh, while we're rounding up. I will answer the other questions. Since if you have answers as well, you can go ahead. But all right, I, I, you see the group where we are in, where all of us are in, the free one and then the elite group. I want you guys to participate. You know, so, there's somebody who chats me privately and says, when it's not that like he's complaining, but it just says that the volume of chats in, in there is, he finds it difficult to locate uh, certain important things to him. Maybe somebody posted it like 40 minutes ago. By the time he comes 40 minutes later, uh, a, a lot has happened and he has started searching. My suggestion to you is this, once you see something that interests you to look at, you can uh, forward that conversation to and uh, maybe another of your WhatsApp lines, or you take a screenshot of that conversation. Uh, so you will have it in your gallery. You can always go back there and look at it. Then secondly, um, if you are active in the group, those conversations will not slide away from you because you will also comment on them. Two, a lot of people are a bit crowd shy, so they contact me privately to ask questions. While I appreciate that, I find it uh, it takes away from what people in the group would benefit. Let me explain to you what I mean. If you ask me a question privately, it's only you I have answered the question to. So only you have access to that information and knowledge. If you ask it publicly, when it is answered, everybody else learn from it who who is in your own kind of situation so that's why i always when you ask me sometimes after i've answered you i say okay throw the question into the group let me also answer there so that somebody else can learn from it so if people don't need to be shy in such groups the reason is because nobody actually knows you maybe a few of your friends know you but majority of people there it's the name you put. If you put uh, Buhari as your name, that's what they will call you because they don't know otherwise. If you put uh, Donald Trump, that's what they will call you because that's the name they know you by. They don't know you beyond that group. So there's no reason to be so private and secretive unless it's a private matter, which I can understand. But if it's a general cryptocurrency related issue, why not? You know, of course. I am available to support you on this journey. That's, I'm not shying away from that. You know, but sometimes you might have to wait 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes for me to respond to you because my hands are full, you know. So that is that. Secondly, when you see somebody ask a question, make an attempt to answer. I'll tell you why. I've always used Asemota's testimony. TJ, you know, 
As yes, I, uh, did, uh, I, asked, I had to ask Asemota whether he had any previous training in this space, and he said no. I said, did you trade forex before? He said no. What did Asemota do? From the very day he got into the training, he began to ask questions. Two, when we got into the general group, anybody ask questions, he will try to answer the question. Yes. He will make an attempt to answer, and sometimes he will be wrong, sometimes he will be right. We will correct him and straighten him out. Today, the guy is making a killing in the market. He is doing extremely well. He came into this place with a hunger. So where I'm heading to with this discourse is that what you make out of this experience is, I I wrote something in the group this morning, that it's the challenge and the limitation of the teacher that he can only communicate knowledge. He cannot at the same time learn the knowledge on behalf of the student. If it was possible, I would learn it for you, but I can't. So you, you have spent money, and that's one of the reasons why we put a price on this thing. Uh, maybe as we go forward and we see volume, we can drop price. Yeah, that can happen. But you know, it, I found out that when things are free and easily obtained by people, they do not value such things. You know, I don't know why, but it's just human nature that that, that is the way things are. But if it costs you some effort, you value what you went through. The same reason why a woman, when she thinks of what it took to give birth to you as her son or daughter, she values you more than anything in the world. You know, so uh, those are two things I wanted to tell you. Participate in the group. Don't be shy. Don't give a damn about anybody. Even if somebody says, I, I can't be asking that one, you should know it. Does it matter? Does it remove anything from you? Is it not your knowledge when you gain it? It's your property to use for life. Nobody can take it away from you. Luis, are you ready? I'm still kind of waiting for you. Okay, maybe he's no longer here. So we'll go ahead. A number of questions quickly. Uh, the next five minutes, we should try and kill these questions and close. Somebody says he trades Forex and he knows about support and resistance. Excellent, uh, the strategy. From your explanation, it's the same as applied in Forex trading. It's the same as applied in all tradings because all yes. markets behave the same way. There's no, I told you before, if you can trade this one, you can trade on the New York stock market. Forget it. There is no difference. It's demand and supply side economics. You do uh, support and resistance analysis and then a few other things you might want to do, but those are the basics. You can look at a pure naked chart like this one in front of you and just look at the, the, you can gauge the direction of the market if you know what you're looking for. So yes, to answer your questions, basically the same. Uh, thanks for an amazing job. Please do remember to guide us on how to set take profits on Binance. Well, I think this person asking this question probably has experience in Forex. For crypto, what I just explained to you about limit and the uh, stop limit order, that's the way you set uh, take profit in the market. But what we generally do, which I think TJ can testify to, you just monitor your trades. So if it gets to a point where you are comfortable, you take some profit out of it, you know, and that is uh, that. But you can use stop limit order to also set your take profit. But I'm not aware that crypto exchanges have stop loss. I'm not a, I'm a TJ, have you seen any stop loss anywhere? Yeah, I think on, on futures and uh, oh this, futures. <laughs> yeah. That's a well, sports trading now. Uh -huh, that's okay. a, a fearful play. I, mean, I know somebody in Nigeria who is doing a lot with uh, futures. You know, and he's lost money once in a while, but he has gained more than he has lost. So if someone has more than one wallet on the same app and the phrase, yeah, that's the seed I talked to you guys about, of one of the wallets gets misplaced. First of all, why should it even get misplaced? Those are things you guard with your whole life. <laughs> but let's assume you didn't guard it and it gets misplaced. Can all the wallets be gained access to, or is it only the wallet whose phrase has been compromised that is at risk? Now, I think what I'll quickly explain is this. A wallet service is different from a wallet, is different from an address. A wallet service would be something like blockchain.com, mycelium, 
Exodus, Electrum. There, there are many now, so many. Do they do so? People have their own wallet, you know. So uh, that's a wallet service. Inside it, there are different wallets. Uh, Kava can have his own wallet. Binance has his own wallet. Inside that wallet, you have addresses to which you send money or from which you send money. Now, the entire wallet itself is what that uh, seed freeze controls. So if you misplace that seed freeze, every currency inside that wallet is at risk. Include, like if you look at blockchain now, you have the seed phrase for your blockchain. Once you put the seed phrase, you will see the balance of Bitcoin from another wallet. You see the balance of Bitcoin Cash. You will see the balance of USDT. All of them, you will see them. So I hope that answers that question. It seems Binance does not log you out. Well, somebody answered that. You saw me inside. You didn't log me out. But you can always use your. I have left my account open for longer. Yeah, I had to. Okay, we talked about how to set take profit. Are we still going for the five minutes before we need? So, well, kind of like we don't have Luis anymore here. Yeah? So, uh, his hand is also down. So, I'm assuming that in the process, uh, TJ answered his question. But this will be the time I will be asking you, if you have questions, please uh, let's have them. If anybody wants to ask a question now, please ask. Tomorrow, <clears throat> I will start by doing the anatomy of candlesticks with you. And then subsequently, we'll do chart analysis. But I think that tomorrow will dwell a bit more. As a question that Cessie wanted me to deal with in this training, I think we should deal with them. Uh, a few indicators and how they are used. Uh, TJ will just probably spend like, uh, they, we have a three hour session tomorrow, so we can do an hour on some of these indicators. I think that would be excellent. Yeah. Uh, so, what uh, Fibonacci is referring to is how to use it, the Bolinga bands and the rest of them. And then again, again, when we throw these kinds of names around, a newbie will be worried. There's nothing to worry about. It's just like when you started school. When they first told you one plus one equals to, it sounded like a Japanese language to a Chinese man. But today, when they tell you one plus one, you don't even think about it. Inside your dream, you will answer it too. So, and that's the way it will also be for you. But just know that um, you started a journey and the journey is extremely rewarding i have a testimony louis your camera is on if you are there you want to ask your question please ask however if i don't hear from you i'll round up the session uh a, just a brief testimony there's a coin <laughs> somebody asked us to buy on sunday tj you are there now this is this yes, is sir. this is the reason why people need to be active in the group because you don't know when somebody will just suggest one crazy coin like this, you know. When the guy yes, got the coin, Aqua Goat, you say, which kind of name is this one? In fact, I was laughing in my house. You know? So we TJ went to analyze it. Oh, this coin looks good though. It has very good tokenomics, but you can never tell. So maybe worth a while. So well I put uh, uh, 200, you know, just to buy and just try. <laughs> by, the, <laughs> by the time we woke up the next day, we were seeing, I was seeing uh, $500 plus in my wallet. I said, ah, this thing don't catch fire. So <laughs> I took out some of the initial investment I put, which is my practice, you know, and then I left it. It kept going up again. At the end of that day, I think it got to it like a thousand or so. You know? Yeah. And then I took another five hundred dollars of uh, no, uh, no, it cost a thousand. I took another nine hundred out of it. You know? Then this thing kept going. You know? So I said, okay, let's what. Then it retraced. Ah, I said, as this thing retraced, let me buy more. So I loaded more. You know, and. Uh, since between Thursday and today, that coin has given me an additional 1,500. You know, 
I would have felt very terrible if I was if I missed that opportunity. You know, this is the reason why we encourage to be active in the group. There are people who have been talking about what they have gained since morning. You would have seen them. Maybe some of the chats were a bit irritating to you, but disturbing me. It's not disturbance. So that's information passing right before your eyes from which you have a chance of making money. So I just wanted to give you that uh, we make money most and all, most if not all of the time, generally from this market. That's just one instance that other people are very aware of. So it's not like somebody is formulating stories to tell you. Seven o'clock it is tomorrow. This is past 10. We've gone quite far on time. And uh, I will be signing up at this point. So have a wonderful night. Please we'll upload the Thank video. you, sir. Oh, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you much, you're Grand welcome. Coach. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. So we'll upload the video later, and then I'll send you a link for your further study. Please do your best to make out time. I advise this morning, you can just wake up like an hour earlier than usual, yeah, like if you have an exam, because life sets exams for us daily. Let us not fail. This, so set aside some extra time, one hour before you normally would have woken up. Just study, gain some knowledge. It's useful. Thank you very much. Have a great night. God bless you. Good night, sir. Yeah. yeah.